Hello, hello everyone. I am Darkness and welcome to Resident Evil 2. Today, we are doing what I like to call the Everyman's Guide. We are actually going to be playing Claire on her A run, her first run, and we're going to be getting hardcore S plus rank on that today. And every man can do it because guess what? You're watching somebody who is not a speedrunner. I don't play this professionally. I'm just a normal guy. I'm a normal guy who is able to do it. I was able to do it with time to uh, spare, and I'm going to share it with you. The only thing that makes me any different than just maybe some other random average Joe that plays a lot of games is that I take a lot of notes. When I screw up, I take notes on what I could have done better, and then the notes turn into how I could have done it better, like down to a T and a science, and all of a sudden I'm counting inventory spaces and it goes a little crazy. So, um, I beat this game into the ground, just like I beat Resident Evil 7 into the ground, and I'm just trying to share with you guys how you're able to get your... Whether you're trying to unlock it because you want to get all that infinite ammo, because that's what a lot of people want to do, or you just want that prestige that comes with it, that you actually are, are able to do it. So, um, let's get some things straight real quick. Uh, as I'm showing you that I actually can do this, so you can trust what I'm saying is, is, is good to go. Um, I'm going to put up the results page. As I say, this is being done on a PS4, so this can be done by anyone. This is not a guide for, you have to have a top of the line PC. This is not a guide that now is unable for you to be using because of whatever. Um, this is, I'm, I have a controller. I don't have some super powers. I have a controller that I accidentally disconnected because I have it wi wired tethered. Uh, so I don't run out of battery power. See, I, there's proof. I'm actually using a controller. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, anyone can use this. Anyone can use this to get Claire uh, S+. Plus. We're doing her A run or her first run hardcore. Here's some things. So if this is the first time you're ever getting any of the unlocks, let's walk you through it. Let's see what you're going to get because you just decided to do hardcore Claire and you're going to get that S+. Plus. Let's, let's stack it all up for you. So, assuming you never saw my guide for Leon, uh, the first thing you're going to get, beating it on standard with a, with an S rank. Uh, which actually gives you an extra hour to do it, will get you the infinite handgun, the infinite samurai edge. You're going to get that by doing this right now. If you beat this on hardcore S rank, both Leon and Claire, it doesn't matter which one you do it on, again, you are going to get the infinite submachine gun, the one that Hunk uses in the fourth survivor. So you're going to get the infinite ammo version of that. Now, here's where it's different. Here's where it's different. Leon and Claire, beating it on hardcore with an S plus rank, both get their unique item. Leon, if you want to go get his, you're going to have to look at the other guide, and it's his rocket launcher. For Claire, it's a really fun gun. She gets her Gatling gun. Uh, the Gatling gun that she uses on the in the end of the game on the G4 Birkin uh, and actually the final Birkin if you're playing as Claire in the second run because I like using it on him too you get that the infinite version of that you never have to reload it is so fun it is is a lot of fun so let's talk about really quick what makes S plus an S plus instead of just an S rank we've got some limitations that we have to abide by one of them is we can't use the infinite weapon. So if you got that infinite samurai edge or you have the infinite submachine gun and you try to bring it into hardcore, it's going to knock you for it. You will never get an S+. Plus. Also, you get three saves and we'll walk you through. We? I'm not multiple people. I'm going to talk you through that. I'm going to talk you through the three places that you should probably be saving the game that most behoove you uh, to do so in those certain places. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to get through all of that and we're not going to be using the infinite knife. Capcom already took out the infinite weapons, including making sure to emphasize the infinite knife from the weekly challenges. On top of that, I don't want you to go off and have to kill a bunch of Mr. Raccoons, 15 of them, just so you can follow my guide. This is an everyman's guide. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want the infinite weapons, but you don't care about a knife that you can swing forever. Well, don't worry. We got plenty of knives. We're going to do it. We're going to do it just fine. Also, the top pin comment when we go ahead and do this is going to end up being um, my comment instead of somebody else's, which uh, I'm sad to do that. It's not me being a narcissist. Uh, the top pin comment will end up being uh, all the solutions to the puzzles, just in case I forget to put some uh, on screen while I'm doing them so you can pause and see what the solution is. And also, when you guys are asking me questions uh, in the comments, I will update that pinned comment of mine to answer the most burning questions that you have, the ones that actually 
you know, get to you or that need to actually be answered because it's something that I left out of the guide. So just remember, guys, all you got to do is open your mouth and ask, and I'll feed you some knowledge, my baby birds. I got you covered. So we're going to get into Claire. We're going to do this on Hardcore. There are some ma big differences from running this as Leon for his A run as opposed to Claire because we're not getting some things and we're getting other things. We'll get into that. Uh, but just remember... We're trying to keep your steez intact this whole time. You style and ease. This is not something to rage about. We're going to be calm. It's kind of like a, a bit of a puzzle. It's, it might take you a few tries. You might have to fiddle around with it a bit. But I'm going to give it... I'm, I'm giving you all the pieces. I'm giving you all the pieces. You'll put it together. You, you, you'll you yeah. get it. But before I go into it anymore, um, other than thanking you one more time for joining me with this, let's get through, let's get through the gas okay? station. Now, this is easier than it looks. It's very much easier than it looks because this, this zombie can be daunting. He can take way too many shots, it feels. Run right past him. Run right past him and grab the key. And stay at the end of the hall. Grab the key and just look at him. He's got to shamble off to the right for no reason. Every now and then he will actually come down the hallway at you. If that happens, actually approach him a little bit and have him shamble towards you even faster. So he does his double lunge. He'll lunge twice at you. While he's lunging twice at you, the, if you're backing up or running away, the second one is barely going to miss you. He will barely not be lunging enough so that you can run to his right side and get out of that hallway. I don't need to show that. It's happened to me in a live stream. It's happened to me once recording uh, that uh, recording that got corrupted. Um, explaining it out loud is good enough, and it's close enough to the beginning of the game. You might as well restart it if that happens. Now, in this little route, pay attention to how I run it because it's not just the most effective, but when we, when we get past the bus, it's the one way that we make sure you don't get tagged. Um, speaking of which, uh, this is a time where I say, this is, a, this is a guide where we're going to be go doing a lot of things and you might need to uh, pause, watch, look at how I do it, see how you might want to do it differently, better, or uh, change it, or this, that, and the other, because I'm not claiming to be perfect. It's an every man's guide after all, so make sure that you're subscribing, ringing the bell, and maybe bookmark the thing so you know where to go back to. Uh, but watch this. Stick really close to the right side of the cop car, and then weave in between that body that's getting up and the guy eating. If you see the path I just did, that serpentine, you will never get tagged. You can make more of a beeline for that, but that beeline can every now and then get you tagged. And there's no points. We are not speedrunners. We're just everyday gamers here. We just want to be able to get our infinite re weapons and have our, you know, get that, get a little bit of swag in the game. Be able to, you know, get, get a platinum trophy if you need to beat it on hardcore for the first time. Or ju just to feel good about the fact that you whoop the game's butt. So, we're going in here. We're getting some ammo. Ammo off of her. That's all we need. And we're going to go lift this up over here. Now, I'm going to stockpile you with a lot of supplies. A lot. And you're going to see by the end of the game that I actually don't use all of them. I couldn't use all of them even if I wanted to. Um, and if I make mistakes, I'll probably leave them in. Just to show that I can make mistakes, leave them in, solve them, and still get you around a two-hour time in this video, giving you 30 minutes leeway to be able to do whatever it is that happens in your game. Um, a misconception, I think, from the first guide I did was that people didn't see me do it on screen and therefore didn't do it themselves. And let's run this real quick before I... Near the firing cabinet, wait for him to bust through, run past him. Now we're going to run down this hallway. We need to hug the right wall. Every blue moon, they won't follow this pattern, but 99% of the time, they're going to stumble out, run right past. When you get to the wall, turn left. It always that way gives you enough room to get around them instead of trying to do this like 45 degree angle and possibly being caught by them. Again, if I'm shaving off time, I'm doing it to do it for minutes of time, big chunks of time, not seconds. Um, so here we go. We're going to go ahead, use the knife, but we need this knife you just gave us. So we're going to use the knife. We're going to open this up and we're going to bank it. But this animation for this gate plays no matter what you're doing. So we're going to go turn around grab the first aid. And I guess the ink ribbon, because we got two, three saves we can do. And we're going to put them in the box. Um, so all this goes in the box. The gate animation is finished up. And we are going to grab the handgun ammo, but not the herb. 
I think the biggest misconception people had was that when they were following me step for step, uh, some of them, especially in the RPD, told me they ran out of ammunition. I'm knocking down this body so he doesn't scare me later. Um, they ran out of ammunition of, out of handgun bullets. Um, I gave in that guide enough times where you could mix handgun bullets in case you needed it. And I'm even going to change the normal strategy. We're getting handgun bullets right here right now. Uh, but I'm going to change the normal strategy. Here's a map if you need it. But you need to have played this game and learn it pretty well to do this. Um, know it at least well enough that you don't need to consult the map. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to use up some gunpowder just to show you how you can get more ammunition just in case that's the reason why you keep not doing it. Now we're going to pass through this hallway enough times that we're going to get these guys to die. Um... So, making the crosshairs actually come together does do more damage. It's not just about aiming and getting a uh, for sure shot. It does do more damage when you do, do that. So, um, we, I'm, I'm doing it over and over because I'm hoping for a better chance at a critical. I am, I'm hoping, but, you know, I'm actually, if it doesn't get a critical, then it's, I'm getting more damage done on them, shot for shot. Um, yeah, let me run into a wall and, and say that I'm doing a guide. Stumble on over here, please. Yeah, are you serious? Are you going to just... Thank you. You want to... Oh, you really want to play do si -Do with me like this? I, I'm trying to record a guide here. People don't, people don't have time to wait for your bull on this. Can you, can you come over here? What are you even doing over there, dude? Ah. Uh, you deserve a crit. Don't ever trust that these guys are dead until you check them, because we are coming back through this hallway. Um, oh, see? He's definitely not dead. And still not dead. And... Is he dead? Still not dead! He might actually be dead. There is a certain amount of health they have before they just die. Alright, he's dead. So now we're gonna run in here, we're gonna do everything normal in the West office that we did in the Leon A, but maybe you didn't watch that guy, so... It wouldn't be normal to you. We got the gunpowder, we got those handgun rounds, and we're getting the fanny pack in here. It's 9, 15, 7. But it should be up on screen for you, just in case, so you can see the solution, uh, just in case I did the did it too fast, or anything like that. Or forget to say it out loud at some time. Uh, we are getting the upgrade for her being able to uh, speed load her, um, her revolver. And it's NED for the left hand. The right hand lock is M R G, and it's the initials on the desk for the people that uh, Leon was gonna work with. They're the first letter of each of their names. So, and combine that, you can actually combine that immediately. I just took up some time doing that, but now we're going to do something different. We're gonna immediately come get some ammo over here. So let me go ahead and do one thing that'll help solve any ammo issues you have. Um, I'm gonna get the ammo over here because guess what? We're not stepping foot back in this room. We're not getting the grenade launcher. That's one of the big differences between playing as Claire when you're following along with me and playing as Leon. We're not getting the grenade launcher. It's not needed until the, uh, the, the nest, so we'll just grab it when the game gives it to us at the nest. So I picked up the board, the green herb, and I'm boarding up this thing so this guy is never a problem. And we're going to go ahead and bank some stuff right now. Um, we're going to come on in here. I want that sweet, sweet safe room music, so I'm going to hit the lights. And uh, I'm going to make a combo herb out of this. And there's another gunpowder right on over here. We're going to go ahead and grab that, too. We're banking everything but um, the gun and ammo. And this is when sometimes I'll slow down and show you my inventory. But remember... Don't slow down unless you have to. My timer is clicking while I'm there on the inventory screen. So, when we come up here, this fine lady gives us some crotch ammo, and we're going to take it. Don't hit her, though, because if you do, she wakes up. We're going to take this guy out first. This guy... This guy is always coming, no matter what you do, so might as well take him first. And, of course, he has to do it the long way and fall over the edge for me. That's cool of him. I really do appreciate it when they do that for me. That's a lot of sarcasm because now he just took more time. And let's, let's check him. He's dead. Okay. Now that we have him taken care of, 
We will now kill the cop. Um, and she also, this is a good reason why we have the speed loader because it takes forever for her to reload if we don't have it. And come on. Not getting crits for days like I did in my last guide, am I? So maybe I do need the, uh... Ha! Spoke too soon. Red Herb is right around this corner. Let's go ahead and grab it. And we are going right on up the stairs. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do something immediately different from what we did with Leon A. Um, which is this locker. It means something to us. The other big difference, we're getting the submachine gun. So this is D, C, M... DCM, and we're getting submachine gun ammo. We're getting the stars badge. We're not going to get the uh, weapons locker key. We're getting the stars badge because she can actually get her submachine gun really easily. There's the spade key. There's a liquor, and that he sucks. Um, and we don't need to gather boards for her. So here's a gunpowder, and here's where I'm going to show you how we can diverge and still have enough ammo to get through everything. So. Let's get some uh, stuff, uh, ammo from that corner. And this guy is going to graciously drop down for me a little. This guy is going to drop down for me a little. This, you know, thank you. Uh, it takes a few shots, but if he's shot down, he doesn't come back and nag you later uh, when you have to run away from the liquor. So, so let's say that I didn't get really any critical shots. But let's say you're you're running even lower. Got to show you. Let, me, let me show you what you can do right now. Right. Something that I wouldn't usually do, but I'm going to do right now. Um, and I, I encourage you to do this. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Go ahead. And in here, don't get too close to the uh, the fat guy in the near that desk. He will actually just randomly get up. And don't use the ladder. The second you use the ladder, um, this guy that's feasting right here it gets up. He stops eating. And he... Comes on over to check out what's happening. Um, that's also why I'm not going and chasing on after her. I'm making her come after me a bit. Um, no criticals. So, we're going to take her down. And then let's, let's assume that you are running, like, way low on ammunition at this point. Way low. Like, you're like, how do I even... I, I, I am so odd that I don't know how to even do this. Um, we're gonna grab this gunpowder. We're gonna mix these two. I just gave you nine more rounds right there. Good to go. We got nine more rounds. Now let's get this unicorn done. This is gonna be the fish, the scorpion, was I on the scorpion, and the jar of perfume, whatever fragrance is coming out of that. We got the unicorn medallion now. And now, even, okay, maybe that nine rounds still makes you uncomfortable about that guy. Let's go ahead and move these bookshelves first. Let's move these one to the right. And we got some more handgun rounds underneath here. We'll grab these two. Now we should be perfectly fine. But we're going to finish the bookshelf. We're going to move this one to the left. Now when we have the jack and we have to come back here, we only have one movement of the bookshelf. So uh, Mr. X can be right up our bum hole chasing us. And it doesn't matter. We got our steez intact still. So now this guy we can go ahead and take care of. No problem. Plenty of ammunition. We made some. We found some. We've got some in different places. And we will suffer none because of that. In fact, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm giving you the supplies needed to be able to pull things like this off all the time. If this is what you need. Is he really dead? I don't think he is. Oh, crits for days. Now he is. So we got the knife off of the ground, and I forgot to point that out. We do need that knife. And we're going to use get the book. This time, get the book. Oh my gosh. If you play it as Leon, and you start getting down a rhythm, you might miss that book because I yelled at you and said, don't get the book. Get the book. We are getting the stars badge. And bank a right and get more ammo. Because I had too many people say that they ran out of ammo. We're, we're going we're gonna to make sure we get you some ammo. So we're gonna, we have enough inventory the way that we've played. We're going to go ahead and get the lion statue over here. So we're going to go ahead and the lion is actually a... Uh, it's the lion and then it's the branch and the bird, I believe. 
So, uh, not that. Branch and the eagle. So we've got that medallion also. Now we can go back and talk to Marvin, whatever he's got to say to us. Uh, we're skipping cutscenes, so, you know, whatever he has to say. Get He, he said it. Woo. And we are going to insert two medallions. We already got two out of the three done. Look at that. That's, that, that's pretty That's pretty neat. That's pretty awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, Elliot was right. And we're going to use our spade key on this door right now. Because we're going to be getting rid of the spade key in a second. It's only used on three doors. So let's get rid of that. Uh, or we're going to get rid of it in a second. And we'll bank and get this uh, herb right here. We'll grab it. Now we're actually going to use the box. We're going to bank some stuff. We're going to bank everything but four items. We're going to bank everything but the spade key, the book, our gun, and our ammo. Okay? Now we'll be able to get everything along our path as we finish this up and get out of the RPD. We won't have to leave anything behind. Nothing uh, will be amiss. We'll be good to go. Uh, so we're going to be going in here and we're going to be getting the safe in here because her other handgun uh, does do better. So let's get this herb. Let's go over to the safe. It's uh, 6, 2, 11. And this is the extended mag for her JMB um, handgun, which comes pre-equipped with a laser sight, her HP-3. So we are now going to use the spade key for one last time when we get to toss it. Um, and because, remember, this is Claire and we don't need the boards this time, we don't need to pick up anything of like that, and we're not getting the weapons key card. We don't need the grenade launcher. I swear to you, we don't need it. I'll explain it more as we go along in a place where I don't have to yammer as we're doing things. But we do need this. We are going to be going by the star's office later on when we come back up We uh, and getting her submachine gun. And we only need the, the grenade launcher, to, really, at the end of the game. Um, or toward, toward the end. We'll need it in the nest. G3 Birkin is very weak to the grenade launcher. But the grenade launcher is just handed to us if we don't pick it up now, so... Why even get it? We'll leave it behind. Don't get that herb. We'll get it later. Um, there'll be a red herb that we can mix with it if we get it later. It's pretty cool. We'll be able to, uh, have a, just a red-green on us out of nowhere. So, pick up these handgun rounds. Pick up the vault cutters. While she's talking, there is like a 10% chance that there is a zombie on the other side of this door that will attack me. If there is, don't worry about it. Just use that green herb you got right there. You can still, you're still fast enough to get through it. But every now and then, there's that zombie. He's right there. Look at that. He, he is one of the random things in this game. He can be right there and attack you. He can have his back turned. He can be down the hallway. There's no way to know. But we're getting this flashbang. We're getting the rounds that are on this dead officer. We're going really fast into this office. We're getting the uh, valve. We're getting the white gunpowder. And then at the edge of this, we're getting that. Now, let's say this zombie's getting too close. We're going to stun him like that. What if he got too close? What if you're a little too slow? Well, you know what? I stunned him. We got everything in there, and we're still cool. Right? That's as if we messed up and he got too close to the door. We couldn't get out the door fast enough. We're cool. We got this. So now that we got this and we got it under control, we're going to bank a few things one last time here. We're going to do the same deal other than the items we're going to need right now. So we're going to need the bolt cutters and the valve. Let's get rid of everything else. The bolt cutters, valve, and then the handgun and ammo. Now this hallway, again, is where some people have a stumbling block. Um, again, I go for legs because they're a bigger target. Um, and they do stagger a tiny bit longer than if you get a headshot. And if you're flailing around with shots, it's a lot easier to hit the legs than to get that headshot. So we're going to actually get the legs of the guy that's right here and make him stumble. And then the next guy can be anywhere. He could be right here or he could be right there or he could be around the corner. He's annoying. But we're going to make them both stumble, trying to aim right for their knee. See that? Now we're good. We're going to use the bolt cutters here. And now we get to toss them. We'll toss the bolt cutters. That's cool. So go ahead, discard these. Get the electronic gadget. Go ahead and get this herb. Go ahead and get uh, this uh, flashbang, and we're going to come out this, this side of the door. Now, like I said, we took down those other zombies that are all in the way, and we took them down already, so we don't have to worry about it. This is a straight shot for us now. 
No having to worry about anything. We can go into this room even. It takes zero time to be able to go ahead and bank everything but the electronic gadget, the valve, and my handgun and ammo. So, now we're finally going up to the second floor. We are going to go through the showers. We're right here. We're still going to get the grenade launcher ammo. We need it. Later. Much later. But not now. So, let's use the valve. And we'll go ahead and do the... This is cap. C-A-P. Uh, to solve this one. And there's grenade launcher ammo in here. Flame rounds in here. And there's also flame rounds over here. I will explain myself why... To, uh, for why we wouldn't get her grenade launcher. Because it truly is pitiful compared to the shotgun and we really don't need it except for one fight we're gonna get the grenade rounds here and then haul your ass that liquor right there won't get you if you haul your ass and get into the star's office we'll get the battery combine it with the electronic ga gadget we have a detonator on our hands now we can get to the maiden statue but we're gonna collect things in here first we're gonna get more uh rounds for the launcher we got the flashbang that we're we're gonna need it uh, we're going to use it. My strategy will use it. Uh, we're going to first aid, more white powder, and we're getting the red herb that's right here. Walk it out. Walk it out, guys. The liquor is actually to our left. He can hear footsteps. That's the thing. When you get close enough, you'll actually start to aggro him. Not because of anything else other than he hears your footsteps. Um, so, like, he's just kind of trying to follow where he heard footsteps. No big deal. Just got to... Stay calm. Be easy. We're good. Walk it right on out. We have nothing to worry about. We're almost finished with the RPD, guys. We almost got this finished. Let's, let's finish it up a little bit. We're going to go right back up these stairs. Remember, no ladder. The ladder makes it so that we have one more zombie to deal with. And we're going to come in here and use the detonator. Now, I figured out on a live stream of mine, uh, trying to get away from the liquor or make him, you know, spawn somewhere else, that running out of this room... Makes it so this bookshelf does not topple over, so we can run out of this book this room and whatnot. And it doesn't matter. Bookshelf doesn't topple over. Bada bing, bada boom. It's kind of fun. Now we've got now the maiden to get, but we've pissed off a liquor, so we gotta deal with him. The maiden is actually the woman, the arrow, and the snake. So there is a woman, there's an arrow here, and there's a snake. A snake, a worm, whatever you want to call it. The ones that are the most burnt right there. I don't know how I'll subtitle it, but those are the three that you need to get for this one. Now, we're going to throw a flashbang. Let me explain this really quickly for this flashbang, okay? We're throwing the flashbang because I know there are other strategies to do this. I know that you can actually hug either the left or the right wall, depending on how you want to do it. Or you can actually try to make the, the zigzag beeline for the door. We're not speedrunners. This is a strategy that's guaranteed, and I guarantee we have enough to spare that we can spare this flashbang. So this is a way that we're going to guarantee that we're going to get past this guy without getting hit. When we're crossing, crossing the threshold of where we just blew up this door, that's when we toss it. That's when we toss it as we're get, getting out of here. If you want a kind of a point of reference of when you should toss this thing. So as we're leaving, we toss this thing. And he is now flailing around. He doesn't know where we are because he goes by sound. It's a flashbang. And we can walk this out. Now, every time. It'll work every time. I don't have to walk you through a speedrunner strat or guide. I can run it faster. It doesn't matter, though. You, you, you're not a speedrunner. You just want the S+. Plus. You just want a Gatling gun. You don't need... That's an, it's an easy-peasy, lemon-squeezy way. We got it covered. Our stees intact. Calmly coming on back down the stairs to put in our last medallion. So, we're going to put in the last one right here. And we have the RPD finished. Now, the RPD should be finished somewhere within 20 to 25 minutes. When you're playing as Claire, because of her handgun that she is starting off with, it can take a little more time. So, I'm in here at 21 minutes, 59 seconds. 22 minutes. That's very acceptable. We've got some time to wiggle, some wiggle room. And actually, because of the things she goes through, instead of like Ada, she does Sherry. And because she's got a one different part that she can actually finagle with, uh, she gains back the those two minutes pretty easily. Um, if you're getting to 25 minutes, you're still good. When you go over 25 minutes of trying to run the RPD, run it again. Just do it again. It's all right. It's all right that you have to restart the game. Hey, 
you bought it because you liked it, right? You bought it because you liked it. So you're going to redo the game if you get to this point and you're getting over 25 minutes. We want to save up that time for you because if we screw up later, we're going to want that time back. So let's not waste it here at the RPD. Let's waste it somewhere else where we accidentally get tagged or something. So 25 minutes max here. After that, you're, we need to rerun it. So let's go ahead and get the flame rounds that are in here. Let's pick up the ink ribbon that's here and we're going to make our first save. So first save at 22 minutes for me doing it, but you can have up to three more minutes for you running through that. That gives you enough time to backtrack and do a few other things and, and then we'll continue on. So we've got our first save under our belt and now we are immediately gonna go into the first Birkin fight. You're gonna see me bank everything here. And this is the first time where I've gotta say practice makes perfect for you guys. Um, we really need to talk about the fact that you, you need to practice this part. Now, what did I just put in my inventory? The two knives and a flashbang. That is all I'm taking into this fight. And I want to encourage you to actually try out this strategy uh, before you start thinking that you need to grab other things from the bank. Because uh, this strategy can work. It just takes some time, it takes some practice. And I don't care what system you're running it on, that's not something that needs to be in the comments. It works and I have now tested it on a PS4, uh, a vanilla one, and it works still just fine. I, I Same exact thing, didn't actually have to do a single thing different. So we now have, I now have not need to have uh, uh, math up on here. I can just tell you, it doesn't matter what system you're on or how you're playing this. This strategy works on hardcore, not standard. He does swing differently during standard. So let's get back to this. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna go down the elevator and uh, we've got one more item to get before we actually go after him. And that item is the grenade. It's at the very bottom of the stairs and we gotta run and go get it. The reason why we are doing this is because we are going to ensure by doing this that we have all of the ammunition for the handgun that we need for pretty much the rest of the game to be able to do whatever we need to do and to have backup just in case you need it for the rest of the game. So now I got the grenade from the bottom of the stairs and we're gonna go into this fight and we're gonna we're gonna put on our big boy pants now. Um, we gotta do this fight pretty correctly and hopefully uh, I don't have to re-explain the strategy over and over, so I'll explain it as it goes. And if I have, if I die during it, I'll just cut back to this point, so I don't have to say the same thing over and over and over. So let's go. Uh, we're gonna skip the cutscene and whatnot, and then we're gonna go straight at him with the knife. We are going to get right at him as fast as possible and start swinging. So we get at him right as fast as possible. We start swinging. Stick to this side of him. All right, just barely at his side right in front of him like this when that eyeball starts coming open get out your grenade right now toss it see that it barely knocks him back and you can keep swiping at him it'll put him down this is your first time putting him down this is where a lot of people get nailed kind of to his arm kind of in front of him so he walks around but now he grabbed me sometimes he grabs now i'm gonna lose this knife which is okay I'm gonna take another swipe or two at him for that. I'm gonna back off and I'm gonna use the flashbang on him because I'm mad that he did that. And now that I've got the flashbang on him, I'm gonna put him back down again. So, again, I'm trying to stick to his side so he has to run around and doesn't grab me. He does this like big circle of swinging. See that? All of that swinging that he does? That was about as good as it gets. If you get hit during this, let's talk about if you get hit. Um, if you want to go check out my Leon A uh, hardcore guide, my everyman's guide for Leon A's run, um, I actually did get hit. And I showed you how to keep your C's intact, because we really need to talk about keeping your C's intact for this fight. Um, if you get hit, combine two of the green herbs you find down here. Don't use the red green herb. We're going to use the red herbs later, or we want to at least have access to the red herbs later. So we're going to use two uh, green herbs instead and that'll get you back into fine if you get hit by him at any point at any point if he grabs you twice but he's almost dead that grenade you just saw me pick up you can run over grab the grenade and see if you can't kill him with that but um now see that how many rounds i got 43 rounds let's talk about that 43 handgun rounds simply because we did not use a gun in this fight that is the significance of why 
I use this knife strategy, why I started whittling down what I could use over and over and my notes got from using gun and grenade launcher and all these things to all to eventually just being the knife. Um, it gives you a lot of supplies afterwards. And at most, if he does do the swing at you where he can, instead of turning around in circles, he just bashes you the second time you put him down, uh, you get back up and you just keep swinging at him. And he should be only one or two swings away from dying. So the second time he goes down, he might not do the circle. He might hit you. Don't be afraid of him. Run right back at him and keep swinging. And he should go down. Use your two green herbs combined. So that is something that you just keep practicing over and over. You saw me stick near that arm of his. And you saw me actually kind of try to stay glued to it a bit. Um, I really did try to stay glued to, the, to it and kind of in front, not behind. If you get behind that arm, he will actually immediately turn around and grab you and make you use a knife on him and stab him. If you do that twice, you're out of knives. So that is something that is just practice makes perfect. Um, if it really makes you that nervous, you can take the handgun and try to shoot for his eye. But honestly, I discourage it by far. I by far discourage it. I really do. And I wish that I had actually gotten hurt during that fight when I ran it, because uh, I, I do like showing that you have leeway, that you don't need to worry about getting hurt, that it's always fine. But then again, in my hardcore run for Leon, uh, for his guide, the first guide, every man's guide that's up, I did get hit. I did show you that it's just fine. I used two herbs, my stees intact. Now, let's say first, before we get to this box, the next loadout we're getting, we're grabbing the extended mag and ammo for the handgun. That's it. The other thing, now I have a chance to finally explain the grenade launcher. Now that I'm just going to get the extended mag and ammo. I just put up ammo, so I'm glad I'm paying attention to myself. Um, uh, we are going to black that, and then we're going to... Where are you? Please show yourself Ex extended mag. So we're gonna grab these two things and we're gonna run on upstairs. The grenade launcher. Here's the reason why we don't need it. You saw right there that I didn't need it. You're gonna see all the times where you think you might need it for things like liquors. You, I'm gonna show you exactly how to walk around them. There's gonna be all these times where it looks like you might need a grenade launcher, or more heavy weaponry, but it's not true. You actually don't need it. And her grenade launcher doesn't even hold a candle to the shotgun. First. Now we're going over here first uh, toward going to the firing range. Let me finish talking about the grenade launcher really quickly though. The biggest gripe is that when you craft shotgun shells for Leon, his shotgun is very viable in that uh, when you craft the shotgun shells, they are the same shotgun shells that you receive when you pick them up randomly. They're the same power. The same power up and when the shotgun gets better and better, now you're going to be able to crown zombies, take off their heads, and it makes a few bits of this game a bit e easier for her 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 grenade launcher is only good against liquors when they're on the ground her flame rounds and against g3 birkin we can get around the liquors and g3 birkin we can actually just wait to get the grenade launcher when we get to the nest i'll also use it for the ivies just in case you're scared of the ivy guys because they're auto kill if you don't have a sub weapon on so i'll use it for them too because we will have enough flame rounds to spare because we're only going to use it for one boss fight and maybe two or three ivy guys to put them down permanently. So that is why her acid rounds are half the power of her flame rounds and it's just, it's complete garbage. Uh, it's a waste of gunpowder uh, when you can get SMG rounds instead and we are going to get SMG rounds. Now we're gonna come in here. We're immediately gonna get this box over here. We're gonna open up the box. It's got the car key in it, all right? The car key is how we're gonna get our actual new handgun that we will be using for the rest of the game. Um, until the very end when we need to use the revolver again because of its magnum power. Uh, we're going to come in the firing range. We're going to get uh, these flame rounds. These guys stay down as long as you don't uh, do anything before you do this. If you go down and deal with the liquors and go down that hallway, um, go off and get the electronics part and whatnot, they will actually come back and reanimate and get in your way while you're trying to get those grenade launcher rounds and this key. So we come out here and we're going to use this key. Oops, examine it, turn it around, all of a sudden, it undoes the back of this car. And now, ta-da, we can combine it immediately, and we've got a nice weapon for us to use. Get rid of that key, and we have a weapon that we can run. The nice thing about her, this weapon for her is that it, um, it is more powerful than the revol revolver, 
And that laser sight means that it's always sighted in, meaning that you always have aim damage. So it always does better damage all the time, and it holds more rounds. Let's get this blue herb right here, and then let me warn you, we're going to walk out these liquors. Just keep calm. Get this, get this grenade powder. They only actually ever, you know, do anything to the sound of your footsteps. So you see now he's following me because he's listening to the footsteps. Walk it out. Walk it out. No biggie. As long as they don't touch you and you walk it out, you've got nothing to worry about. So we're just going to walk it out all the way. And we're going to go into the morgue. Let's go ahead and remember that this is actually the um, A run for her. So things are a little different here. The guy with the diamond key. We do have to get the diamond key with her, unlike Leon. Uh, she needs the diamond key. Leon doesn't. So we're going to open the second to right drawer and get that red herb. And I, while talking, didn't combine the two. Uh, you do need to combine them. The last drawer on the right. Uh, we, we don't have to actually reclose this door because it won't get in our way at all. There's a flashbang. We're going to go ahead and grab that too. And it's going to be pretty cool to have later on. Because uh, I'm going to show you something that you can use with the flashbangs. Finally, this drawer. As soon as you touch the diamond key, this zombie and the zombie near the door reanimate. So you need to actually grab this key and get out the door fast. So I got the key. Haul ass. We, the reason why I even bring ammo in the gun, just in case you actually need to put that zombie down. Now we're going to walk again. Let's talk about this room real quick. If you are in fine caution, I mean, if you're in fine condition, you can do the strategy where you just walk. You hug the left wall, literally press yourself into the left wall and walk around this liquor. If you are in caution or danger, purposefully run into this room, aggro the liquor, run out of the room. And when he resets a lot of the time, the liquor that is on the ground that I'm about to walk past actually is on the wall with the other liquor and you can actually get past him in caution. I never knew that, but I actually learned that just playing in a live stream where I accidentally ran in on accident. I just ran into the room. I didn't mean to run into the room. I ran back out being like, oh crap, I messed it up. Let me redo it. And all of a sudden he was on the wall. Uh, so it is actually possible to do this if you accidentally get tagged in, by one of those zombies in the morgue. You just have to run in the room and run back out of the room. So I'm in fine cost. I'm in fine condition though. So I'm actually going to just hug this left wall right here and I'll barely get by that liquor fast enough that I don't have to worry about him doing anything to me. And I just walk this all out. Do not break into a sprint. Do not start running. Because there's a liquor in this hallway. He's right there. Sticks it near the right hand wall. Every now and then, for some reason, his animation can touch you if you're near the left hand wall. And it will aggro him and he'll come at you. So now we can go ahead, put on our jogging shoes, and go towards where the chief's office is. Um, uh, use that up that diamond key. Must be where that guy came from. And we're going to grab everything on the way. Here's a map. If you need a map, you don't need a map. So we're going to use the diamond key. We're not going to use the diamond key again. So that's it for the diamond key. Uh, we're going to grab this blue herb. And the locker is the stock for the grenade launcher. We are going to grab that because we're going to use the grenade launcher later. And here's another uh, gunpowder. Our inventory looks full. That is perfectly fine. Because we... Many times when I am leading you through this... Like I said in previous guides, I am, you need to pay attention to what's actually being put in and out of the box. I'm trying to lead you through it because literally you see now that if you brought more than the extended mag and ammo, you don't have enough spaces to just in one run get everything and just save yourself some time. We're going to grab this green herb, combine it with this. We got a full shield heal. This is when I should probably explain what a shield heal is, like I did in the last guide. A shield heal is what, I, is what I call it when we have the red, green, and blue herb together. It gives you a full 100% heal, putting you back into fine condition. And also, you get the shield in the bottom right. It protects you from poison, so the uh, sewer monsters can't poison you. Uh, it protects you from damage, so that things that might put you in danger will instead put you in caution. So it's great for boss fights. And there's the tiniest speed boost to it. You get a temporary tiny speed boost, especially when you're in caution or in danger if you have it on. 
Um, a green, I mean, a, a red and a blue together will just give you the shield without healing you. So if you ever at any time need, you know, that extra protection, that's what a shield heal, that's what I talk about. Or if I just say I'm putting on a shield, I'm using a red and a blue. So we're going to go ahead, ahead and bank everything. And I'm telling you right now what I'm about to load out with. So, you know, before I go through, just in case you don't have, don't have to pause it. I'm going to keep out my gun. I'm going to keep out ammo. I'm going to get a red and green herb mixture and I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to get out the jewel and we'll grab the heart key um, over there. But let's go ahead and do that absolutely right now. So the diamond key goes up. I'm going to get a red, uh, green. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, red, green uh, herb mixture right there. And uh, the diamond key, yeah, we're done with it. And we're going to come on over here and get the heart key. So, no biggie, we're going to grab this. It's in this painting. Um, go ahead and examine it. And you've got your heart key. This is where we start, again, diverging from how we're going to be playing Leon. Because we do need to go downstairs, and we need to go downstairs not only for the gunpowder, but for the fact that she needs the jewelry box to get the stars badge. So that's why I have the jewel on me. We're going to go ahead and just have that with us. So, to do this safely, and people have argued with me about this, and my uh, counter argument is that if any person lingers in this hallway downstairs, there is t there are two ways for this zombie to break through, which is why we have to come upstairs and grab the board. So we're grabbing the board, and while we're up here, we're going to clear out these lockers. We're going to get the flashbang, and we're going to get, get the handgun ammo right here. Um, the reason I say board up the window is simply because there are two triggers that can make him uh, crash through the window, and now you have to deal with him. Uh, and the board just fixes this. One of the triggers is that uh, passing him twice will do it. So if I pass him now this one time, and r running back, running back, he will always crash through the window. Here's the first problem with that. Let's say you accidentally forgot something or you didn't uh, load out correctly. Hey, there's a uh, powder in this locker right here. Let's say that you actually accidentally didn't load out properly and whatnot. Um, if you didn't load out properly and you have to make that run more than once up and down the stairs, he's going to be there. And now you have to deal with him. The second thing is, let's say instead of on this pause screen, I'm listening to the guide right now. I'm listening to me talk and I forgot to pause it or something. There's a second cue that can make him pass through, which is the timer. If you let enough time pass, an extra 15, 20 seconds than running through all of this, he will crash through and you still have to deal with him. The board just eliminates all of those variables. And while I'm on this pot screen, I'm going to say, get the handgun ammo on the left, go behind the table to get the jewelry box, and then run out of the room. There is a liquor that pops out of this window. So let's go ahead. Let's use up this uh, heart key real quick to get in this room. We're going to go ahead, we're going to walk and grab these handgun rounds. Now, see, we got handgun rounds for days now. We're going to get this jewelry box, and now that we have the box, we can actually... Oh, I didn't get... I didn't get the jewel like I said I should, but that's fine, because we have to go back to the box in a second. Get out the... Get out. That's the liquor. We're done in there. See, even I screwed up. I didn't get the, um, I, I didn't get the jewel, but that's fine, because we're going right back to the box. We're going right back to the box real fast because we want to deposit something so we can grab everything else on the way. And by depositing everything, our new loadout here, just so I start saying them more and more often, is that we're going to bring with us the handgun, ammo, the heart key, um, and we'll go ahead and do the whole stars badge thing right now. So, um, uh, what I should have done is in that spot bring the red herb. I mean the uh, red jewel so that I could have done this a little faster because I could have instead right now already combined the two and now we see we have the stars badge and then if we examine the stars badge we get this and I made another mistake while doing this see time is okay I put up the red green herb um, uh, like I said we need that so that is the loadout right there that's what, what, what I'm going upstairs with right now. Let's go ahead and take care of upstairs real quick. So we're going to be grabbing a blue herb, which is why I said get the red-green. Now you'll have a full full shield heal ready to go uh, mixed in your inventory. Um, and just in case something happens in this room, why not? See there? We're going to grab the gear. And then we're going to quickly run up this ramp and trick this zombie. We're going to make this zombie over here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
This is bad. This is bad. We're gonna trick that zombie, hopefully, into doing what we want. Grab that, get through this door. That zombie taking so long is a problem. You're about to see, you're about to see a worst case scenario here. The worst case scenario that can happen is that that zombie takes so long to chase you up that ramp. I went up that ramp so he'd chase me. Uh, that the other zombie in this can catch up to you. The strategy I usually use is I let him bust down this door. Stand near the right side. If you stand too close to the door or to the left, the door will hit you when he busts it down. I might get tagged when I'm running out of this room by the other zombie. Nope. Nope. I'm in the clear. If I end up getting tagged by the other zombie, I'm cool. I'm about to go back to the box anyway. So I won't use that shield heal unless I really, really am paranoid that, you know, both zombies are on top of me and I'm just like scared out of my mind. And once again, I will pause it because I'll give people a chance to realize what I'm about to load out. My loadout is going to now be again, we're, we're banking everything we got except for the gun, the ammo for it, the stars badge, the heart key, and the gear. That's what we're taking with us. All right. So everything else that we just got goes away. That's our inventory. Gun, ammo, stars badge, heart key, gear. Got it? Good. We're running. We're going. You're about to have to make a pimp decision here in a second. Because now we're finally going to the balcony. And we're going to be able to, to possibly pull off getting you two more green herbs just in case you've been uh, getting yourself uh, snagged every now and then. So there's a blue herb on that table. We're going to grab it. And we're going to go down the uh, ladder. Now, when you make this pimp decision, just realize this. If you screw up on this, it's literally screwing up on trying to get two green herbs. If this messes up, if you screw up, you can just use the two green herbs to put yourself back in fine, and it's no loss, no foul kind of thing. Run straight for this valve and hit it. There's a zombie getting up behind you. You don't want to have to deal with him. But her, you need to kneecap immediately. There are two green herbs at the end of this hall. You can grab them. You don't need to mix them with anything. You can just grab them. Now, if you did it all, see what I'm talking about? I got grabbed on purpose. I could I could have kneecapped him. I could have done it. It would have been fine. But you know what? Usually, I won't. I usually will back up and go ahead and kneecap both of them. But now I'm going to actually do this for you guys. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to combine the two. Like I just screwed up. Okay, now I just screwed up. Look at that. I just attempted to try to get two more heals. It didn't work out. Maybe it won't work out for you when you try to follow the guide because you didn't actually nail both of the zombies kneecaps real fast. If it doesn't, I'm still fine. I lost nothing but a few handgun rounds and I just showed you that we collected a lot of handgun rounds from uh, the first Birkin and from a lot of places else that we collected that we've skipped through things. We've got handgun rounds to spare. No loss, no foul, steez intact. We're gonna keep going. Um, no biggie. And if you do get to keep them, don't think it, you don't have to combine them. You'll have enough inventory space. You'll actually have perfectly the, the perfect number of inventory spaces that you can keep them separated so that later on, if something tags you like uh, Mr. X, who we're about to run into, if he's able to hit you, get this red herb and combine it with a blue. If he's able to tag you once, uh, he should, his hit should only put you in caution. You could use one of those green herbs instead of, you know, the double stack green herb. So we're not going to use any special strategy on him other than just running him to the balcony. We're going to run him out to the balcony. And we're going to run to this corner. He's going to come after us and we're going to give him a wide berth and let him keep chasing us. Now, when we go ahead and do this, we are going to run out here and make the corner. And we're going to go to the green herb right here. We're going to grab it. We're going to mix it. All right. We're immediately going to go out and we're going to finally get our SMG. That is, I believe, what we're going to do because I'm taking a quick uh, look at my notes to make sure that's how I want to run this. And yes, that's exactly how I do want to run this. Um, we are going to go ahead uh, to go to the library spade door on the second floor. And since we have the stars badge with us, we're going to go ahead and grab um, the SMG. So we're going to run through all this. Good thing that we killed all those zombies, right? We're going to walk this out. There is still a liquor in this hallway. 
Um, don't worry about that diamond door. We it's just a portable safe and other stuff. We 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 don't need to worry about that. The liquor is at the very end of the hallway. So if you get down, about to this point, he won't catch you if you just start jogging now. Um, and now finally, finally, we can use the stars badge. Do not retrieve the stars badge. Don't get it back out after you've hit this computer. Don't get it back out. We're not getting the upgrade for the SMG because it's useless. We actually don't want that in our inventory because if we actually did snag both of those green herbs back there, it will t take up one spot where we're forced to combine the green herbs and we don't want to do that. We're going to walk right back out. We're walking right back out. If we walked the whole time while we did this, the tyrant shouldn't have gotten back to us. If he does, remember the tyrant loses you in the star's office. He can't go in there. He can't go in the star's office, so we can just walk it out again. It's fine. Um, as soon as we start running, we're going to get his attention. We might have to run him around in the library. It's a possibility. But I don't see us doing that right now. We don't have to. So, instead, stick to the right-hand side. We don't want to wake up Marvin. And we're going to need to go th right back through uh, this bay door, the first floor spade door. And you might have to kneecap a zombie here, depending on where they're placed, uh, to stagger him. Walk out of this door. There is a liquor right behind me. He heard my footsteps, he heard the door, he's not the happiest, but I don't care. I'm using the heart key right here. And now, the heart key can be dropped. So let's talk about this. If we actually did get everything, look at my inventory real fast as I do this and I grab things. Two spaces. Two spaces for two herbs right there. That's the two herbs. That, that's it right there. If I actually had the two herbs, I'd have full inventory right now. Now, this is usually what Mr. X does. He does usually catch up to you at this point. You don't have to worry. You still got this. You can actually still walk out that liquor and get through everything just fine. Let him come chase after you into this room. And just go around the bookcase. Run through the heart door, but then walk through the next one. Just like normal, walk through it. Walk back to the west office door. And usually there's not a zombie here. Make a beeline. If there is a zombie, kneecap him. So we're good. We're perfectly fine. We're still not waking up Marvin because he's asleep. He's a sleepy peepee. -pee. That's what I'm going to pretend because I hashtag poor Marvin. And we're going back upstairs to the library. We're going to use the jack that we just got. So we're going to use the jack and, uh, um, and bring back down that bookcase. Good thing we moved the bookcases because just in case the tyrant is right on me from all of that, I can go over to this last bookcase once to the right. Now I have a bridge made for me. I go up the ladder, and this is the last time I'm touching this uh, library. So I really don't care that I see he's disturbed now. I don't care that he's disturbed. No more sound of silence from him. And we go into this hallway. At the end of this hallway, there is a zombie hiding behind that pillar. Bank a hard right into this door. If he tags you, it's okay, but hard right into the door. All right? He's sitting right there to hurt you. Now, let's say another case scenario. Let's say you accidentally brought something you didn't mean to and that your inventory is full this very second in a way that you didn't expect. And now you're like, how do I solve this puzzle with the gears? Or maybe you grab that herb outside um, for some reason be because we don't need to grab the herb that's right outside this door yet. Maybe you did that. Maybe you did one of those things. It's, it's an easy fix. Let's actually pretend that my inventory is full and I've got to finagle with just two, you know, a full inventory, but I give up the big gear right here. I put in the big gear, and this still gets me everything when I do it this way. So I put in the big gear, and I'm going to, instead of grabbing it and taking it with me, instead of getting the gunpowder to the left, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to get the small gear. Since I'm going upstairs and getting the small gear, I'm going to take it right back downstairs. And I'm going to put it where it belongs. Right here. So we got the small gear where it belongs. You're still just dealing with two inventory spaces because you decide to bring something more and you're worried about inventory. Uh, now I can go grab the uh, large gear again. Run it up the stairs and put it where it belongs. I, I wasted a whole 30 or 45 seconds doing it. No biggie. Just in case you run into like an inventory management problem, uh, this puzzle can be solved with only uh, with a full inventory and having the large gear on you. It can be solved, and that is how you solve it. 
Otherwise, just go ahead and grab the large gear out. Uh, grab the small gear, put the large gear in, put the large gear in downstairs. You know how to solve it, probably. If you played this game, you should have played it. And we're actually going to go in this back room now and grab the large gunpowder that's back here. So we're going to grab this because we, when we do make the acid rounds, we want our best bang for buck when we end up having to make them for the uh, G3 Birkin fight. Uh, we want some uh, large grenade uh, powders. So, we're finished with this room other than just grabbing the actual box here. So let's go ahead and grab it. We've got the electronic part. Let's open it up. And let's talk about the fact that you've got a 50-50 rando chance here now. Uh, there might be the zombie that we just we just juked him. He might be right outside that door still. Also, the tyrant might be out there in the hallway, so you might have to like wait for him to walk down that uh, to the to the left to be able to go straight forward. Either way, there's a 50-50 chance. Either I'm about to get bitten by a zombie. Honestly, I'm about to be getting bi bitten by a zombie because even when you crack the door, sometimes he can grab you before you can back up fast enough. Or like he's supposed to be, he's actually now all the way down the left side of the hallway and you're in the clear. So let's see which one. I'm going to open this door and he's down the hallway where he's supposed to be. Great. Grab the herb. That's a nice little herb. This guy. Sometimes he, he's in a position where he can just run by. This time? Nope. He's not. So, kneecap him. When we go through this next door, bank a hard right, quickly kneecap the zombie. Quickly. You see me unlock this door? I'm going to bank a hard right, look at the fact that there's a zombie, kneecap him. Now we've got a clear shot. We can run the long way. And we are right back toward the chief's office. Right back towards the chief's office. As as easy as that. Uh, don't don't try to do the straight shot because that uh, the zombie that's actually right in front of you that would be the straight shot is actually random where he'll be placed. Now what am I gonna grab at and put out of the box again? One more time, I'll pause it for you so I'll tell you what's going on. We're getting the handgun. We're gonna be full up on ammo. So get your get your stack of 60 handgun uh, rounds if you've got a stack of 60 sitting there. We're going to get the two electronics parts and we're going to get a bad knife. And that's going to be our loadout for just leaving this place. We're going to be finished with it. So um, so I'm going to actually put this up and I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, practice what I preach. I'm going to go and grab a full stack of 60 rounds. You see how much handgun ammo we have because we did knife strats here? There we go. There's the reason why. We need the other electronic part. And just in case the dogs that we're going to deal with uh, after we get out of here just give bad luck, we're going to take this knife. Why not? We can, we, can, we can have one counter on us that makes us feel better. And uh, these, these rounds right here, you don't actually need to bank. You don't actually need to bank those rounds. You can just carry them along with you. Now, for this puzzle, I literally have... Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. I literally have a picture of how the puzzle should look right underneath me. So if you need to pause this to do it, to remind yourself, that is fine. Because I'm even sitting here uh, looking at the way it should be done. Just to make sure that I do it most effectively for you. And that I don't screw everything up. So this is, it's supposed to look kind of like this W shape. But if you need to pause the video and look how everything's placed right there, it's going to be the exact same every time. The way that they need to go. So, let's go ahead. Now we're going to be playing as Sherry. So, we do have a Sherry strat even now. It's uh, pretty nice. Um, I learned after writing down a lot of things that um, after you get the block, after you get the creepiest doll in the world, um, that there are two blocks that will always be constant, and one is very obvious to spot. So we're going to grab this block. There are two blocks that are always constant to try to get her puzzle done a little faster. The first block is that there is one block that has two star, star pieces on the same side. Literally, it's a half a star, half a star, both on, flat on the same side. That is the always the leftmost block. It belongs on the leftmost side. There's also another block that has a star piece on the bottom left. And from your perspective, bottom left and uh, top right has a half a star piece. That is the second to right uh, block. I hope you caught that because if you get those two blocks where they're supposed to be, the other two blocks get pretty obvious where they should go. So we're, we're going to spot the two star block first. Um, it's going to be, uh, I didn't mean to actually back out of that. Uh, this one. So this one goes over here first. And then there's going to be a block that's, it's not that one. There's going to be a block that's got a star piece. It's not that one. This block. This block goes here. There's a bottom left, top right. 
now we're probably gonna be able to get this puzzle really fast. Uh, it means what it means is that this block is the one that goes here. So we got that. We got that. That's how you solve that. I hope I explained it well enough so that that puzzle doesn't vex you anymore. Um, I hope I hope that was a good enough explanation for that. Um, if you need if you need me to just really spell out that one, let me know down in the comments. Some if if like if that one is one of those that you know I just did too fast and. You didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, really um, say what I meant well enough. Um, go ahead and let me know in the comments that I need to spell that out in that pinned comment I talked about of putting all the solutions. I'll put that as a solution. I'll, I'll actually talk about it. I'll spell it out in the pinned comment. Um, but just remember, the, the, the block that has two stars on one side is always the leftmost. You've got one or three, uh, four blocks down doing that right there. So let's, we're making this puzzle as easy as possible. So we're Sherry. There's no reason to not run the whole time of Sherry. Um, we're just running this out because Sherry's slow. Um, but her part in this game is actually shorter than Ada's. So she's going to give us a little bit of um, a time skip uh, where we can, even though we have to wait for it and whatnot, she gives us a tiny bit of getting back those two minutes I talked about wasting. We're going to get those back because we get to run through all this. As long as you don't run right up to him, which is really dumb. Hey, Mary, daughter, uh, we run right to the key. We grab it. And now we're running for our lives. So we're we're running, 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 we're running. Run up the stairs. I really like how he doesn't warp anywhere. I really do appreciate the fact that in all of this, they let you, as her, see him coming after you. Like, you can stand up right now and see that he's going to walk up the stairs, and he won't spot you while you're just standing here. You need to crouch down, like, in a second. But he's, like, well, he's coming after you, and you can see it. So crouch down. We're going to hug this dresser for right now. Tea bag of locking. It's all. I love how he enunciates locked. It's good voice acting, in my opinion. So, we're gonna stick to this side and still start circling around. See him? I know you're in here. The longer it takes me to find you, the worse it's gonna be. So, I'm I'm sorry if this seems like pandering to anyone right now, but just in case, I don't I just don't want you to lose to this part. Because this is a, a pretty straightforward part to get through, and I don't want you to, you know, waste, you know, twenty some minutes of a run uh, to this. So I'm, I'm still gonna walk you through this as if this is your first time, even though you should have played hardcore before, or at least standard, and tried your best. Wait for him to go by now with his flashlight. As soon as he's by, you can go ahead and start walking. Where I'm gonna have you stop? See these towels right here? Stop right at these towels, looking near the door. He's going to say, like, son of a bitch or something like that. That's your cue that you should have needed to start moving. But he's going to use his flashlight to look everywhere. He's going to be glancing around and looking for you. The flashlight's going to come near us, but the towels are going to block his view. And he's going to start saying words. Son of a bitch. That's to walk forward. Literally, when he says that, you can walk forward and get to this right here. You're staring down the door right here. Um, that you're going to be leaving out of, and you're just going to wait. You're going to wait for him to get to you. It burns. And now we need to actually run to Sherry. So that's going to be fun. Um, let's go ahead and just run to get the key. Let's do a quick turn for once, because her turn speed is awful. Um, and run it out. Fuck is my key. And you can quickly just mash, if you're like on PS4 like I am, for all of these unlocking of doors, just mash X like crazy and it'll unlock it because it's the only thing in your inventory. So, you're just getting to the door, you're just like, like, mash like crazy and it's done. So, run through it. He turns into the shining on you. Uh, all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. And we're gonna, one more time, run away from him. And we're going to go through this door. 
and play one of the coolest cutscenes in the game, but I am going to skip it because we are doing strategies here. We're not looking at cutscenes. So, now we're back as Claire. Um, so, we, I, I've got some things in my notes to say, explain things. Um, for now, since we already loaded out for what we're going to need in the future here, um, our loadout is already in here. Now we got the parking permit, so this is what we want to see. Just we are actually just, asshole. we're going to run for the, um, for where we need to go, which is back towards the elevator. We're going to go for the elevator here. So we're going to go through the office. We're going to go back downstairs. Here's the deal. We are going to actually make uh, the tyrant chase us in a loop on purpose. And that loop is perfectly fine. Um, it's the safest way to get past them and get past the gate that we're about to go through after we get through the parking garage. Um, so we're going to do bigger loops, but they're safe loops. Instead of trying to be badasses and, you know, trying to do some... Uh, some strat that we don't need to do we're just gonna run them in loops and be safe and it'll be cool it's fine um, it's, it's less stressful when you don't have to think that you gotta pull off something amazing instead you just gotta be a normal gamer okay? so we're gonna run around this car to give us the gate enough time to open tyrant will chase us we still have enough time to bank a right here and grab this herb I mean it's just right here so let's go gr grab it so now we're going to run, and we're going to purposefully uh, take the right-hand side to run. So this path in between uh, this armored and this civvy vehicle, we're going to run in between these two. And then we're going to run at the gate to purposefully, not in front of it so we don't get knocked back, but now the gate's knocked down. Now you see I'm running alongside and weaving in between where the ambulance and everything is. This gives me enough time that those two zombies at the gates are now stumbling around. Now that they're stumbling around, I can avoid both of them. Um, so now, no matter how they end up being, I can stumble around them. I promise you, no, how, no matter how they are. And if you can't, Looks like the only way a handgun round to the knee, stun them if you need to. The tyrant shouldn't be right on your ass. Now at the stairs here, no zombie in the game, and this is something you might not know. No zombie in the game, if they are not looking at you and they don't hear you, they will not aggro you. So you can walk down these stairs, and I'll just do it for the sake of this. You can walk down these stairs, and she, with her back to you, will not actually know that you're here. You don't have to do anything to her. Uh, because of that, we can, we can literally just do that if we need to. But the second we throw some shots over here, she'll know, and she will climb that. We can also try to nail this zombie over here, or zombie dog. Is up with you? We can try. But see, now she's climbing over. So now we're going to have to pull off some quicker shots here, and it's fine. Um, we know he's there. He's making a, he's making a big fuss. We're going to... And hopefully the other dog that's left is the one that goes on top. It's not. It's going to be another one that runs around. Nope, it's the one on top. He just, he's the easiest to take down. Either he jumps at you and when he, he's in the midair, it's an insta-kill. Or if he's on the car, he keeps getting knocked off the car and jumping back on the car. Knocked off the car, jumping back on the car. It's kind of weird. This, uh, no reason not to take care of uh, these zombie dogs. Let's not get tagged by any of them. This one will climb the fence. So you might want to take care of him pretty fast. And finally this guy no reason to risk it remember we purposefully got handgun rounds to spare so we could do things like that so let's go ahead and grab that let's grab this and so the herb and the smg ammo that's on the bench there's a blue herb out here uh we're gonna grab that guy too there's a blue herb out here there's a grenade on the bus and we need to kneecap the zombie on the bus this is where the rng gods can smile in your favor or not these zombie dogs, if one is kind of stuck at the front of the bus, he will always snag you. And it's annoying. Otherwise, kind of have the camera pointed behind kind of have the camera pointed behind you. And you can see where he is. And if you if you just kind of try to make sure see he almost got me, but he didn't. If he snags you, 
Uh, if he gets you from the back, he'll put you in caution. If he gets you from the front, uh, you have that knife on you. Just shove it in his face. Shove the knife in his face. Um, and we're gonna go upstairs because I'm a, I, I swore to you I was gonna give you enough supplies to be able to do this, even if you blow through ammo. Uh, if you bl blow through ammo and heals. Uh, we're gonna come up here purposefully just to get the ammo and the first aid spray. So, in the bathroom, uh, where Chief Irons was, there is, uh, a first aid spray, and there is SMG ammo. Right here. We got it. It's, uh, it's, you know, 45 seconds out of our way. Why not get it? Because that 45 seconds can save us a lot of pain and hassle when a boss fight becomes easier because we've got ammo to expend. Um... And give yourself leeway when you can, when it's no big deal. Like I said, when we're going to cut out chunks of time, it'll be a chunk of time. We're going to be counting, like, minutes, not just, like, a seconds. So, we skip through Chief Irons. We go all the way through here. And we are now going to be down, going towards the sewers. Down the ladder. And, uh, we need to see that the tyrant is going to be here. Time for the tyrant. Where are you? So. Claire, Sherry, I'll be right there. Yeah, we gotta run. Go, go, go! You guys know what to do. You've, you've, this. If you're watching the guide, this for sure should not be your first time playing through any of this. So you know what to do. Run it out. Keep going. It's cool. We got this. You know what happens here if you played the game. Remember, we're we're doing S plus hardcore, so this isn't the story run. I've got a walkthrough or my original playthrough of this for all that. SMG ammo right here that we'll grab, and we've got one thing to grab over in this room. This plus P ammo. We're gonna need it later. The the Magnum rounds pretty much for her. And in this loadout right now, what we're going to take with us, again, I'm going to explain it before I get into the box, hand, the handgun, ammo, and a flashbang. Um, I finally decided that we're going to use a flashbang from now on in the room that where the zombies are so we can go ahead and get the grenade launcher round and get the locker all safely. So we're going to go ahead and everything else is going to go away. Uh, handgun, ammo, and since we have a flash, a flash grenade to spare, for sure, uh, we're going to take that. We're going to keep the handgun and ammo because we've got some zombies to take care of um, afterward, too. So, might as well keep it on us. Can you hear me? Um, but we're about to get to our next save point. So, if you've gotten this far with me, congratulations. Um, let's get this blue herb. Jump up in here. Get that. Let's go ahead and grab this white powder. Uh, Gunpowder that's sitting right here. And let's run ahead. So now that we've run ahead, um, we're about to come to where we're going to need to use the flashbang. This room always was a pain for me, but now that I know kind of what I use and what I don't in this game, yeah. we have flashbangs to spare. Especially because the last Bir uh, second to last Birkin fight gives us more flashbangs. So we can actually go ahead and just... I say screw it to everyone in this room. Go ahead, toss in a flashbang. Let them all be stunned. Run on over here. Run around him. So that doesn't happen. Uh, make sure that you do this locker combination correctly. That is S, uh, Z, F. And notice I went behind him so he didn't lunge at me to do anything stupid. Uh, grab that real fast. And we have enough time now to jump on down. And we're down here. We're down in the sewer. We're finally to the sewer point. And now you see that I am exactly an hour in. And this is the exact time. Whoops. I disconnected my controller again because it actually is wired connected. Uh, so every time I move the wire on accident, it disconnects. This is again where we need to talk about um, saving. So we have three saves in the game. You saw I got here in an hour. An hour exactly. Um... I would say, if you're running on par for the course, I mean, this is the literal halfway points. If you see on the results for at least this right here, I've gotten a, a shaved a little time off of this uh, on my other accounts, but I'm at two hours. I'm literally halfway through. So if we scale this up, 
if you're running at the pace that we're going right now and you seem to be barely lagging behind, you can do the math real quick that an hour 15 minutes is about the maximum you've got uh, before you have to either say you went too slow or you have to trust yourself and say between the save you're about to do and the uh, the last save you can do, you're going to haul your ass and make up that time. You will not waste any more time. You're going to, at most, 10 extra minutes in this. Because if you're running it at this, you're c- cutting it way too close to the 2 hour 30 minute mark. Um, if above an hour 15. You're, if you're above an hour 15 minutes, you, you're either hauling ass and mastering the last back part of this game, or you went too slow. And that's the best I can say for you because I I tried to build in time. So if you're like at an hour 10, you know, you got it still, you know, just make sure that you, you're you still running at a good click. You still are going to do it with probably 10 minutes to spare. Uh, even in that, just getting closer to an hour 15, just, just start, go ahead and make that safe, I guess, in a different safe spot. Try it. See if you can't master the sewer. See if you can't do everything. Um, if you're perfect, if you're perfect at the sewers and you know what you're doing, you can save it after you go run the sewers, get all of the, um, chess pieces and all that jazz. I do not recommend that. If this is your first time playing hardcore, these guys hurt you and the sewer monsters can take you down really fast. I suggest that you just learn how to run the sewers very well, which means we are saving it right here, right now. This is our save. So if we have to come back because we get killed sometime, even when we get to the nest, before we get to the last save we're allowed allowed to make, we're going to have to run the sewers again. All that means is that you have to learn how to run this part of the game again pretty well uh, from from the sewers up to the nest. You got the game because you like the game. That's what you got the game because you like playing it and it's a good challenge. So it's no biggie. It's no biggie if you have to rerun the game because you decided to save it a little earlier. And honestly, the sewers don't take that long to get through once you get used to them. They honestly don't. So let's go ahead. Let's let's uh, see that we've got uh, an ink ribbon right here ready for us to use. And let's go ahead and make our second our second of three saves that we make uh, for the game at this typewriter right here. All right, so now we have that save under our belt, uh, we're going to go ahead and clear out some zombies before we really, really go at it. So you're going to see me put away everything really fast. And what we're literally doing, here's a map if you need it. Um, what we're literally doing is going and clearing out everything. Um, I encourage you right now to try to shoot for no more than, than 15 to 18 minutes to run the sewers. I literally mean that. If you go over, I'm not even going to give you 20 minutes. If you go over 18 minutes to run this, you just saved it. Try it again. Try it again, because you can do this in under 15 minutes. There, this is a part where everything is pretty straightforward, and even if the random number generator guides are against you, you can still pull this off. And I'll show you the tricks of the trade of being able to pull it off just in case uh, the worst case scenario happens to you. You will still survive the sewers. I'll get you through it. Uh... I mean, my baby birds, I'm trying to feed you. You, you just, I, I, I got you. So we're going to get that red herb. We're going to get this T-square. Um, uh, or T-handle, whatever. T-valve handle, I believe, is what they call it. And we're going to go over to this, um, uh, am I, and my recording and everything, For some, I had to stop it for a second. But 2, 12, 8. If I forget to put it up on the screen... Uh, for you to read so you know what the combination is. Uh, good news! It's actually written on the side of the actual safe. 2128. Hug this wall and walk slowly. You don't actually have to wake up that zombie. You can grab this, walk right back out. He's none the wiser. You never have to waste ammunition on him. Uh, combine these two herbs, and we're going to take care of the zombies on the stairs. So, um, I could show you a route to go get the rook piece instead, but I'm not going to do that. Um, if I showed you that route, um, that's the easier part. You, if, you have, when, if you have to restart a part, it's going to be the part I'm about to do. So I hope that you definitely take into consideration I'm leading you to the left on, first on purpose because if you restart this, I really want you to not have to restart it too many times. Can I get a crit, please? 
All right, he's dead, but he's not. Shit. Are you kidding? I counted? That was a crit for him. All right. And then finally this guy. All three of these guys really need to be put down. We good? We're good. Are, are we sure we're good? One more shot to make sure. So I was not blessed by the crit gods this time. Um, I get that full shield heal. And I'm getting this grenade. And then we will actually talk about our true loadout for going uh, for the king, queen, and the spark shots. We desperately need the spark shot. The upgraded spark shot is actually her strongest weapon. Uh, when it is a fully discharged shot, and we need that on the final uh, G4 Birkin on the train. Uh, not the B scenario train. I mean, actually, when Cherry's like, you know, we have to, we go outside the train and we're on the timer for like 10 minutes. So this loadout now, we're going to take five items with us. And literally, if we do this perfectly, we will come back with a full inventory. So let me go ahead and combine uh, the upgraded uh, part with this. And let me explain that this handgun uh, now is her magnum with the uh, upgraded rounds. It does not make normal rounds any more powerful, but it makes the upgraded rounds the same damage. Uh, her aimed upgraded rounds is the same damage as Leon's upgraded lightning hawk unaimed damage. So basically, it's a magnum. So we're going to put that away for right now. We're going to put this away for right now. We're going to get some more ammo out because I expended some. Or rather, let's uh, let's do this. Um, I, no, I, I'm going to do it this way because why not? Um, I'm going to do it this way to show you that, you know, I, I put more gunpowder in here for a reason. We're going to get three more large gunpowders, and that's what we're going to use to make our acid rounds that we're going to need later. So these, these are freebie handgun rounds. So I didn't grab these. I, instead, I just made a few. Um, so we got those two things, and the final thing we're going to get real quick is a bad knife. You might have more bad knives than I do at this point. If you do, a winner is you. Um, that, that's just a, a good thing for you. So now we're going to tack tackle the sewers. I want you to really learn the sewers, and I'm going to explain the randomness of it and what goes on with it. Um, and it'll be a short pause, and I'm sorry that I'll sound like I'm rambling off, but whatever. I could talk about it now, but instead, the only thing on my mind right now is that I totally want to tell an autobiography of my life, but I want to do it all in uh, song lyrics. As in, like, I can't even add words like the, of, a, to, like, the, I can't even, I, I, from front to back, from the beginning of my life to the end of my life, I want to do an autobiography that is only song lyrics. Um, I'm probably going to end up mentioning that in a live stream because it's just like, it's, I, I so badly want to do that. Anyway. We're getting into, let's get on our big boy pants. So we're going on down. This is probably one of the harder parts in the game. Okay. Um, only the RPD, I think, is more difficult than this. But since we have a save right close to this, I think that this is not as hard, hard simply because it's repeatable easily. You see, I'm only six minutes in. So here's how we're going to run this. It's left, right, left is the general rule. So I'm going to get in this corner to start off, and this is where I want you to start off to, in this corner ready to shoot. If you get too close to him and you fire the first shot, what will end up happening is that you'll get knocked back by his animation of him popping up out of the water. When I throw a shot at him and he pops up, I'm going to run by his left side. He won't grab me. I'm a haul ass and hope the random number, eight, uh, number generator gods are in my favor and that the other G mutants doesn't catch up to me and I'm going to run right literally to the right past him and I literally am going to not even just run past him I'm going to try to run toward the wall so that I'm not trying to duck around him I'm not going to even give him a chance to try to grab me now this is why you have the grenade equipped not the knife first if he does grab you let the grenade take care of him that should not come back enough that either you're able to you'll see a gap and you'll be able to get by where you should have been before. Or if that gap is filled and you're going to have to use quick snap judgment. Maybe you need to pause your own game to figure out where, if he's too close. Sometimes the grenade doesn't knock him back enough. But it does stun him. You might need to go around to the left side. Either way, go towards the red light. There is a red light over the door that we're trying to get to. So no matter how he disorientates you, just run toward the red light. 
The third G mutant, we need to hug the left wall and, and he'll he'll miss us for sure. So that is getting toward there. Um, do not use a heal. Do not use your bad knife to get there. Even if you get poisoned by the second guy, because this first guy should not hit you. If this first guy hits you, start over. If the second guy does hit you, let him poison you. That will guarantee that he has to stagger back and give you time. You'll cough, but you'll have enough time to go by the right side really slow. And then you'll have enough speed barely to hug the left wall and get by the third one. And then you'll have a shield heal waiting for you all the way made when we get in there. And you'll use it, get unpoisoned, and have a shield on the way back. Got that? I tried my best to just explain what's happening. Hopefully you see me run it perfectly. Or maybe it's better if you see me not run it perfectly. Let's see what happens. So... Bam, we're running by his side. We're gonna go as fast as possible, right here, right here, to try to get to this gap. Now we're running towards this wall. Did it. Now they're left the walls. That is called a perfect run. If you don't mind wasting six minutes of your life to have to repeat that over and over to try to get that perfect run right there, be my guest. It is awesome to be able to get that perfect run and be able to keep all the items. It really is, it feels good. Um, it makes you feel like you're the master at this game when you actually do something like that. Um, but, again, it is very random whether the uh, second one will catch up to you. There is, it, it, it can ruin your whole, I'm not going to take damage, which is why I get, got you that grenade. It's why I brought a bad knife, because the bad knife is what we'd use on the way back if something happened. And I'll explain what can happen on the way back. But first got to deal with this. There's a guy hanging above us. And he will fall as soon as we start climbing the stairs. What we're going to do is let him fall and grab the uh, king as fast as possible. And jump down as fast as possible. Usually he should be crawling. If he starts standing like this, run past him really fast. Hopefully he doesn't lunge at you. Um, if he looks like he's up too fast, pop him in the leg. Now that he is up, he's a bigger pain in the ass. But we're still going to do the normal... Alright, I'm going to get the king piece out. And I'm going to do the normal pop him in the leg to stun him. And now when I run past him, I can actually take this piece out. Peace out. <laughs> I made a joke. Um, he's trapped in there now. So we put the queen back here. And do you see how my inventory is now full? I did run it uh, to its optimum. The best that I could run it. Um, we put the queen there, the king there. We go back out through where the queen is. Grab, it, grab the queen. Circle back around. Go back in through the king door. All puzzles solved. We have the spark shot. We have a full inventory. So, we've got a second explanation to make. Hopefully, everyone is where their normal reset positions are. But I'm going to try to say where all the positions are and how to avoid all the pitfalls. Alright. This guy is not where he's supposed to be. So, right here, normally, um, the third one should have chased you far enough that he should be somewhere in view. You're going to want to taunt him by standing right close to the ledge where I am, so he wants to try to charge at you and get near the ledge. If he gets close enough, when he does his quickly head animation, you can jump off the ledge, run over his body. Once you do that, he'll pop back up, and he'll knock you away from him, but he'll knock you toward the egg where you're trying to get, which is to the exit, back out of the sewers. Um, he'll knock you away from him, and he can't grab you. All right, second case scenario. He is actually still right there, um, and we can't see him, and he'll pop up. Uh, what I do right there is either decide to try to backtrack to this ledge and do the same thing I just described, or I will put a few shots into him and force him into, by attacking him, I'll force him to either start vomiting uh, the G-mutants, uh, the, the G-pupi or whatever, um, larvae, larva, or I'll try to get him to do that big attack he does where he just swings his giant arm down. Either way, I can run by the left side of him if he does one of those two. <sighs> The other two places he can spawn right now are there's a G mutant that's already up to the right hand side. He can be right next to him. If he's right there, just hug the left wall and you're scot free. The worst place, which is probably where he is, because knowing my luck, he is going to be right there. He's actually going to be in your way. This is where if you use the grenade, this is why I've got the knife for you, because if he is in your way, throw shots at him and try to force him again into regurgitating or into attacking you so you can run by his left side. If it doesn't work, you've got the knife to stab into him and try again to run by him. That is why we have the grenade and the knife. Um, those are the scenarios. The most likely is that he's either right where we are or he's in our way up there. 
So he's not here. He's most likely on our way, and I'm going to have to throw shots at him. Let's go do it. He could be right here, and he's not. So I'm running the left side. He could be to my right, already spawned. It doesn't look that way. He's going to be spawning right in front of me right now. No, he was to my right. I had to throw no shots. That was the luckiest break you could get right there. That's as lucky as you can get. Absolutely as lucky as you can get. We're in, when I just said he could be right there, before I could climb up on the ledge, he would have popped up. I would have shot him. I would have thrown shots at him, and by attacking the G-Mutants, they do, instead of trying to grab you, counterattack with a long-range something of either their arm or throwing up. And that is how you trick them into being able to get by them uh, when you can't run them around. Um, the last trick here now is that we're going to jump up onto this ledge, and this last mutant does this lunge every time. When he's finished with his lunge, we jump off the ledge and run over his body. As simple as that. Again, if we screw up on that, honestly, that's where the knife comes into it again. If we screw up on that, we shove the knife in his face. And the knife in his face is enough to actually give you enough of a gap to get to the ladder. Um, that And that's that. Since I actually ran it perfectly, and I don't think I ran it perfectly for Leon A, and I had to get the flamethrower, so most of it should be kind of the same. You can see me, again, you can refer to the Leon A hardcore uh, every man's guide um, for getting that S-plus rank. About this timestamp, you can go back to that, and you can see me run it a different way. Um, and a way that I messed up. So I'm going to put this away, put this away, put this away, put this away. We're just going with the handgun, some handgun rounds. Uh, I'm keeping the two chest pieces in and the T-square. And we're going to now go get the rook piece, okay? We're going to do another alternate strategy that I didn't do for Leon's. Um, the one that I said that could be done, but I said you don't want to risk it necessarily. If you want to take the less risky route, uh, when we go over where we're going to go, you're going to actually uh, take out a zombie while he's on the ground. Um, if you want to see the less risky way, I did it in Leon's. You can't refer to it because the, the, the sewers are almost identical for them to run them. Uh, you can see the less risky way. I'm going to use a more risky way. So I'm going to hug the left hand wall here. Uh, the ass in the hole is going to jump out at me. But, you know, he's no biggie. Hopefully he does what he's supposed to be because he's another random number generator demon. Who he's supposed to be at the ledge where you are right now when you come back. And if he is, then we can run right over his body when he decides to go into the water himself. Just like we ran over the body a few seconds ago. We're going to get these rounds right here. We're going to go up the, uh, the elevator. This is where in Leon's, I killed this zombie so he wasn't an issue. But let's pick up these handgun rounds. And I killed this zombie. Um, if you really think you have the time to go out for a hiding place, by the way, this is the film you have to get, but I'm not picking it up. Don't pick that up. Um, if you don't, if you are afraid that he can catch you, if you're really scared of him, go ahead and put him out. If you want to put on your big boy pants, this is what you do. You go over here, you walk to it, you unlock this door. Don't actually open it. You take a running start at it and you grab the work piece as fast as possible. When you grab it, turn right back around and get back through the door. You see he's up? You can actually go left around the table. He might even start chasing you. But if you go fast enough, he will not catch you. No shots fired. And the G-Mutant's where he's supposed to be. So when he uh, despawns right here in a second, we're going to run over his body. Squilly neck. Boom. Yay, get away from him. He tried to take a swipe. He missed. There you go. So that's where he's supposed to be. If he actually despawns further away from that platform, um, or is actually spawned further away, you can try to coax him toward the platform by taking a shot at him. If he despawns, 99% of the time, he is permanently gone. As in, if you get lucky that he is further away from the platform, 99% of the time, he is actually completely gone, and you don't have to, you can just run right through. He's not going to pop back up on you. You can just run straight through. So... That was a pretty good run for me. I'm going to get the rest of the chess pieces out of where they don't belong. And let's quickly solve this so that you know where everything goes. This should be from left to right on this wall near the door. It should be uh, the bishop. Uh, followed next by the rook. 
And finally, the sign is correct in the A runs. The knight does belong here. On the opposite wall, from left to right as you face it, it should be the knight. I mean, the knight, why am I kidding? It's the king and the queen. If you wanna see the real way to solve it, it's actually posted on the poster right behind me. There is a bulletin that has a riddle uh, right here on that bulletin board and you can and you can solve it. Let's check out my timing real quick. I just ran that in 13 minutes and 24 seconds. Remember, I landed down here at exactly one hour. I'm not kidding when I say, learn to run this in 15, 18 minutes max. It is wasted time because it's only 13 minutes of your life and you need to get good at the sewers because for all you know, you're about to die to Crate Birkin or you're about to die in the nest before you can get to your last save and you're gonna need to do it again anyway. Get good at that part because we have to deal with it in every single version of this game. In both Claire A and Cla uh, Leon A and Claire A, they're identical. Cla uh, Leon B and Claire B, they're identical to each other, but they're different from the A scenarios barely on where the first one is placed and that there's a zombie kind of in the way. So, now that I've shown that, here's the loadout I'm taking into the Crate Birkin fight. And I'm gonna say it out loud first so we can talk about it, and then I'm gonna just do it. So I'm gonna take a handgun, I'm gonna try to take a full stack of handgun ammo. I'm gonna take my submachine gun, I'm gonna take a full stack of sub submachine gun ammo. I'm gonna take two first aids, one grenade, and one flash grenade. That's gonna fill up eight spots of my inventory, eight out of ten. On the way running toward this fight, you will actually pick up a full, a full shield heal. You'll get a, uh, a blue, red, and green herb. Combine those together, and the first time that he hits you, if he lands a hit on you at all, because you can actually avoid the whole thing if you do it perfectly, if he lands a hit on you, use the shield heal first. Then you take less damage, and the other two first aid sprays go a lot further. You can let him hit you twice instead before you have to heal instead of once. Um, the other thing that is that actually where we're fighting, there is another flashbang and a knife. But between the shield heal and getting the other knife, we fill out all 10 spots because the flashbang will be the second flashbang we got ill stack. So that is our loadout. Um, I explained it there because yes, the clock is going as we're here. Again, just close to the biggest stack of handgun ammo, handgun ammo you've got. Um, if it's not a full stack, don't worry about it. There's actually some handgun ammo down there and there's also some uh, machine gun ammo down there. But we should have plenty of submachine gun ammo, uh, enough handgun ammo. Uh, we're gonna do uh, first, and I say first aid, but I'm gonna prove something really quick. Uh, instead, the second one, I'm gonna take, uh, let's say you used all of your first aids, you're like on your last one and you're like, damn, I can't follow this guide. No, I'm actually gonna combine these two. I'm gonna make this into my first, my second first aid. Uh, that's what I'm gonna take with me, uh, just in case. Cause I gave you enough green herbs that I can I can just do that. I can. So I did it, I just did it, there we go. I didn't take a first aid. You, you screwed up enough times, you got hurt. You couldn't do what I did, fine. I just did two green herbs together to get us through this. Now I'm gonna take one hand grenade and I'm gonna take one flash grenade. There we go. To put this T-square up because you don't need that and let's go off to the fight. Here's the strategy for the fight. We are going to use the fact that she's got a laser sight on this to try to get his front eye on his right shoulder. So we're gonna try to run circles around him and get the front eye on his right shoulder. We need to down him three times if we want to get him with the crate only once. Um, so this is one last explanation that we have to go through and hopefully you'll hear me over all the malarkey that's gonna go here. By the way, this is uh, switches one, two, and four. So make this go off. And then he's gonna start attacking us. There are three ways to beat this Birkin. And literally it is how many times the crate hits him. Shit. You can do no damage to him and only stun him, and you will have to hit Birkin with the crate three times to kill him. If you do moderate damage to him and put him on his knees once at least, you have to use the crate twice to knock Birkin off the side, which is why we have flashbangs, because one flashbang to keep him there for one of the times that the crate's knocking him off, and one flashbang to keep him in front of the crate the second time it's knocking him off. If you do it the way I'm trying to show you right now, where we're gonna put him down on his knees three times, the third time's a charm. By time number three, when the crate hits him, the crate only needs to hit him once. So I'm gonna try to go for the only, only doing it once. Now run, run at this gate while he's tearing it apart. Run 
and run as hard as you can. The straightest path you can. He can still tag me. He can he can he can mess with my steez, or he can try to. But if he catches up too much, he will be able to swipe me while I'm trying to jump down. But usually you'll cut it really close like that. So the grenade needs to be equipped right now. Because we're gonna throw that immediately at him. And we're going to hit this, get the flashbang I was talking about, and the knife I was talking about. We're gonna throw this at him, and then we are going to equip the flashbangs instead because we need that knife to start swiping at him. We're going to try to move out of the way. I grabbed those those right there. He gave me a clean shot. Aw, clean shots kind of at his front eye. Since it's got the laser sight on it, I'm going to try to get the shots I need on his eye. Mm. See, he puts you in danger in one hit when you do this. Oh, he starts swinging. You better get in your inventory very fast. Use the shield heal. Now, if he even hits me again, it doesn't matter. We, uh, we take out the front eye with the handgun. We take out the back eye with the submachine gun, and I'll put him down. So... So hopefully, since it's harder to hit the back eye, that's why we just did it that way. We can spray and pray. We don't have to try to aim the shots. We can just spray and pray at it and get it. Now we're going to equip the knife. Now we're going to start swiping at him to do some real damage. Get him at his side. I'm literally hitting his back and his arm. It counts as two hits on him if you do it like this. You can even hear it hitting him twice. Back off of him. Now we're going to rinse and repeat. We're going to use the handgun again to take out his front eye. We're going to use the submachine gun to get his back eye. This time he's going to start lunging at us more. If he does the long lunge at us, run by him. It is it is the easiest way to get his back eye. So, so we're going to still try to get... Uh-uh. Nope. See that lunge? Oh. Nope. Too slow. Too slow again, but he did that lunge again. I tried. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. There he goes and swiping me. I'm still trying to get that. No. Ooh, and that is why we shouldn't have had the knife on. I literally told you guys earlier, I literally said switch to your flash grenades so you could actually do more damage to him when he's down I didn't follow my own advice let's say you accidentally screwed up too well let's go ahead and still finish this off see if we can't get him in one so now we're gonna have to do it a little different we're, we're gonna pump submachine gun rounds into him and luckily there's more submachine gun rounds right here so we're gonna try to do this a little different so, we got his front. Um, we really need him to go down for us. Because now, we're in a dangerous territory where we're a little... And I'm going to use this heal real quick. Spray and pray. There we go. All right, now we're gonna put him on his knees one last time. All right, same tactic, except for I didn't change what gun I had. Put him on his knees where the crate will actually hit him. So bait him out here. He really, really, really badly needs to be out here. Don't put him right where the crate won't hit him. Spray and pray. Hmm. Nope. Which I. There we go. Crate should get him right there. And we are going to hold him there. The second he looks like he's starting to get up, we're flashing and we're not even risking it. I did it prematurely because I wanted him to stay down. There you go. 
I even screwed it up. I wasn't able to knife him the second time he went down. I even screwed it up, but you know what it gave me? You know what it did still give me? He drops the knife back down. It should be right about here. I got a bad knife for the Ivy guy still. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So I, I, I should have switched to the flash grenade so when he grabbed me, I could have used one of the flashes instead and kept using my knife. But, you know what? Things happen. Um, and I'm going to use this first aid so I'm not gimping around everywhere. I'm going to use that first aid up real quick. And now, now we're, we're in awesome sauce territory. We, we did it. Uh, we're getting cherry. And now we're just running for the train. It is really hot in this room right now. So if I look like I'm sweating, I, I am. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna go over here and like duck out of the way so that I can just not look like I'm glistening as much. Like, oh, I've got, um, I've got a box of Kleenex right here. I can just go ahead and I can, I can dab. I can, I can dab. Um, You're gonna be fine. I'm a wedding photographer by trade uh, of 10 years. Um, I mean, I haven't done it in a while, but I'm so used to having to be like, all right. We're going to dab to try to get some of that uh, oil off uh, with uh, an oil dab to make sure that this shot doesn't have too much sheen on you. Oh, good. The cable car. Which is a whole different discussion. That's why I usually know how to make good lighting. Why my, why my face cam looks usually decent, even when, uh, even when I had okay. not a better camera, is because of the lighting. Your camera needs light. So let's stop talking about me face dabbing um, or dabbing in general. We shouldn't dab. Um, let's talk about our nest load out here. So we're going into the nest over here. We got to carry Sherry over there. We're finally getting the grenade launcher. We got it. We're going to get it. Do you see how useless it pretty much was to us? There was really no time during this whole run that we needed that grenade launcher. But with Leon and his shotgun, or with um, Claire and her grenade launcher... If you leave it behind, it will always be on the desk that we're about to walk into. It'll be on, in the same place for both of them. I'm not standing back from the doors until they're fully open. Don't tell me what to do. Don't don't try to live my life. But thank you for welcoming me. So, um, we're going to put her up. And now that she's giving us this uh, nifty little bracelet, turn right around. There it is. There's a grenade launcher. We're not going to add the stock yet. For space saving purposes, because I'm going to assume that you don't want to deal with IV people as much. So this first uh, loadout right now, we're going to have the handgun, we're going to have the ammo, we're going to put away almost everything else, but actually, um, I'm going to say, um, and let me let me actually look what, what I'm doing, like, um, I, I, I'm going to put away the bad knife. Um, and why am I going to put away the bad knife? Because I'm going to uh, save it for the IV guys. Um, so you can have another bad knife later. Let's assume that you're running low on bad knives. Uh, this guy actually doesn't, the guy that can tag you here, he doesn't do too much damage, and you actually get a knife here. If you have to, you can completely kill him and get your knife back. So, uh, we need those knives simply to protect us. Bank or right, get this grenade, alright? Let me explain something. Even if you don't grab that grenade, you better bank or right. I am dead serious. You hear that zombie that just started moving? If you try to go the way I'm going right now and grab um, her spark shot needles, which are on my left, which I'm about to grab, and you try to grab the handgun ammo, even if you don't try to grab them, there's a chance this zombie, instead of stumbling toward this way and toward where I just grabbed that grenade, she'll get in my way and she'll actually be able to lunge and get me. Uh, she won't get you if you get the grenade. If you take the time to get the grenade, she's actually too far away to be able to get you. Now I can grab both of these things. Oh, it's a boy this time. Again, it's a boy. And as soon as you start the animation for a ladder, the zombies can't get you, so just run to the ladder. Now I've got more needles for the spark shot. I've got more handgun rounds. That's pretty awesome. <clears throat> and I did it all with my steez intact. Uh, we got the uh, one of the two large uh, uh, grenade uh, uh, gunpowders I'm talking about, and a new knife. Um, I'm going to say unequip both of these. Don't accidentally use them as su sub weapons. This guy is probably right here. Um, he is really annoying because where he ends up is just annoying as I'll get out. And I'm going to go ahead and put him down um, because we are going to come back. So I'm going to go ahead and put him down because we're going to come back. I'm going to get you your extra inventory space. 
so that you can run this a little easier. Grenade launcher rounds, uh, with the, the spark shot uh, upgrade, the conductor, and uh, this is going to be your electronic chip that you can just go ahead and combine right then and there. So we got everything. We got everything. Stick to the right side. Those green doors, if you open them, if you open the green doors, the zombies that are inside that room can actually come out into the hallway. So when we come back, they can be something, just another nuisance that you have to put down just so you can get extra inventory space. Because I'm going to get you extra inventory space. It's only an extra th three minutes max to try to run it. And we got it. We got it covered. We got it. Co we, it we, we get it aced in spades. Like, we, we really, we got this. So. You see I didn't hit the box? That's simply because there's actually a box, you know, right over yonder. Um, we're, we're about to hit that box instead. So, we come on over here. We open up this pathway. And once we do that, we've got a box with a new nest loadout. I am going to give you guys a fail-safe way to make sure that you don't feel like that the Ivy people are going to be the death of you while you're trying to run away after you get the last band upgrade. Um, I'm, I, I, I actually redid inventory spots. Uh, it's not the way I usually run it, but the loadout I'm about to give you will give you everything you need. Everything you need to be able to um, go ahead and bring the grenade launcher with fire rounds so you can feel more assured that you're going to put down two of these ivy guys that could be a pain. And then you're going to be able to put down two more before you even get the band upgrade. So you only have like one to shoot. And it's going to be really nice. And then we're going to have a bad knife on us just in case. And everything's going to be a-okay. So I'm going to, because this, we have only two uses for the flame, uh, for the grenade launcher. Uh, the Birkin fight and these ivy guys. And so why not, I'm gonna, I'll show you the, the safe way. Our loadout now... Right now is the handgun. We're going to top off the handgun, but not bring ammo for it. We're going to bring the launcher. We're going to bring six flame rounds. I'm being specific for that because there's more flame rounds to pick up later. And um, depending on how you go about things, I just want to make sure that you don't accidentally have to drop a flame round because God forbid you have to drop something because of that. We're going to have the band um, and we're not going to worry about bringing a bad knife right now because we're going to end up picking up a flash. And we're going to take out Ivy, guys. So we're going to have reasons not to take a bad knife the first time we go through this. So did you get that? The handgun full up, but not its ammo. Uh, the launcher, six flame rounds. Yep, give or take. I'm going to say six flame rounds just to be safe. And the band that gets us through the doors. Let's get into this. So is it full up? Yes, it is. Let's put this away, this away, this away. Um, this away. I, I know I got to get right back out, but that's cool. Um, we're getting the grenade launcher. And watch this. By not having used any of the flame rounds so far, we've got... I got six right there. Uh, it's not like I'm counting things a lot or anything. And the band. So four items in our inventory. I'm telling you right now, literally, with these four items, if you take a single other item, you will be dropping something, using something, or something else will go on. Or you'll have to backtrack. So this is another time where the inventory matters. Let's go ahead and get this done. So, I'm going to pretend that you hate Ivy, guys. It takes two times of hitting the guys with Ivy to be able to kill them permanently. So, what we're going to do here is actually go ahead and take out the furthest one. Because that this guy is just standing right here. This jerk. Um, and he's burning, but he's not dead. This won't kill him yet. You're going to actually have to pop him one more time. Let that finish up. And then pop him one more time. Alright, now that he's been popped twice, we're going to come back over here. And you can knock this Ivy guy out of uh, the, the ceiling. You can actually shoot him. And I'll shoot him on down. Once he gets up, we'll do the same to him. We'll let him burn. And then we have to pop him one more time. Now, do you see why I said six? 
That means that if I wanted to go ahead and pop any more Ivy guys, I can take one more down com completely and uh, a second one halfway. So get that flashbang, get the herbicide. Um, six is a good number. Now, we need to know the codes to this, and I wish I could just put them up on screen. Um, uh, maybe I'll make a, a, a thing that I can put up on screen to show you the codes. But the codes that we need right now are what I call Tetris, Line, looks like a P, and then the big brick. Alright? That's, that's, I call it Tetris because it looks like two Tetris blocks. The other one is what looks like to me like an, e it's like start F, Lines, Tetris, F. That's what it looks like to me. You need to know those two combinations. Um, I'm sorry if I forget to put up a solution to that on screen, but it is what it is. We're running down here. We're going to grab this red herb. Don't forget it. We're going to run over into the drug testing lab. We are going to grab another... Oh, I forgot. There are four um, uh, ways that we can make acid ammo. But we're actually going to go ahead and combine these two. Um, and we're going to get acid ammo. I'm going to end up having to drop one round of acid ammo. Um, we're going to get this grenade, and we're going to solve this puzzle. This puzzle is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Start with red, and go from right to left over and over. So, it is, right now, red, green. Now we're going to start all the way back to blue. Blue, red, green. Now we're going to go all the way back to blue one more time. Blue, red, green. That is how you solve that. It's pretty cool. Um, every now and then, using a large gunpowder, you can make... Uh, it's random whether you make five acid rounds or six acid rounds. It is very random. Here's another random number generator thing. Whether this Ivy guy is standing where he's supposed to be, which he is. But we've got this. Pop him once in one of his orange spots. And go down the ladder. We're not going to actually deal with him yet. There's no reason. The, the way that they spawn and they work, uh, putting them down permanently, um, isn't, isn't viable yet. We're grabbing that right now. That big gunpowder. Oh, by the way, if you need it, here's a map. Okay. And, um... You see I have a full inventory, but... Don't worry, got it covered. I already thought it through. We're gonna do something that people might scoff at. We're gonna use this grenade. These guys, for Leon, are easy to pop off all of their heads just by being able to use the shotgun. For her, it's a pain in the ass. So instead, we're gonna use um, the shock, uh, the grenade and only have to deal with this guy. He usually doesn't die because of it. So because of that, we should be in the clear. Let's make sure. We're in the clear with him. We're in the clear with her. We're in the clear with him. There we go. Pick up these flame rounds. Uh, we've got one spot to spare again. We're gonna get this green herb. I'm still not showing you guys the knife strat. That is for live stream purposes only. I've shown it on live streams. Instead, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna walk out the liquors. Uh, this one's gonna drop from the ceiling. I want him to aggro my footsteps and do that animation. And I wanna walk him this way. Not run, I wanna walk him this way. And then I'm gonna start turning this corner wide so he won't touch me. And all of a sudden, we just walk those guys out. See why I like the her, her biggest strength is that the flame that there's a uh, there's a zombie to your right right there. We'll kneecap him on the way back. See why the grenade launcher really it just we really don't need it until the end. And we we're about to see right now why we got to drop an acid round, which is fine. Um, we're we're dropping acid. Um, we're gonna combine these right now. Oh, I made six and six. We got to uh, drop two. Um, I don't want to. The way I just ran it, I think I miscounted. Um, by throwing the grenade, I think I just left myself with a way that I can actually get the modulator. And not have to drop any of the acid rounds. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get the modulator. And let's not... I, I'm glad I actually miscounted. I thought I would be full up, but maybe... So, by the way, make sure you kneecap them, because on the stairs, you cannot use a secondary. So if they get you on the stairs, they will get you on the ground immediately. Knee they're walking slow. Kneecap them easily. Here again, though, 
we are go- going to put on um, some kind of uh, secondary, which we have luckily the flash on us. Um, walk it out. We need to walk. We need to walk. Be Christopher, because we're walking toward uh, the power panel right here. Now, usually right here, you'll aggro them, and they'll start following you like you're the Pied Piper. Uh, we need Murph right here. There are a few bad things that they can do. We'll see if they do them. So we gotta solve for Murph. Um, oh gosh. Every now and then. There we go. There we go. And use it. That restores power. Which means that we need to go freeze our herbicide now. Look behind you and see where they are. Okay, that's how they are? Cool. I'm gonna walk this way. If they had been on the other side of the table, cool. I would have walked the other way. If they had been doing a pincer attack on me, I would have tried to stay in the corner as much as possible and try to sneak through. And as a last ditch, I would have used the, um, the, the, where you're gonna see me, uh, grab some items from. I would have run down the hall, uh, the closer place to try to run away from them. Um, because there are turns. There are twists and turns, maybe they won't lunge and get you. I'm leaving this behind. If you don't want to leave it behind, drop two acid rounds. Uh, drop some acid if you don't want to leave that gunpowder behind, but I'm leaving it behind. Um, I, 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 uh, we're pretty much finished with what the uh, gun is going to be doing for us as far as needing to make any rounds. Because if we need any rounds after this, we are going to be, they are going to be heaped upon us in the uh, G3 Birkin fights. They are everywhere. They are everywhere in the G3 Birkin fight. There's so many rounds that it's more than two stacks worth. So we don't need to make really any more. Uh, we should be good to go. Now the liquors have reset to a place where we can just walk right by and we're gonna go to the server room. Um, remember, they're following your footsteps, so just stay away from them, walk them out, keep your steeds intact, everything's cool. And we've got one more loadout that I've got for you. Um, this loadout, after we collect everything in this room, um, so I'm gonna have to bank some stuff. Um, this loadout after I collect everything in the room is going to be the one that's going to also assure you that make you feel good about being able to get through this with no harm and that you're just fine and all that jazz. So this loadout to get through this last little gauntlet before we're actually getting to our last save and getting our upgraded uh, storage is that we're going to, in this room, leave the room with the handgun, handgun ammo, uh, the launcher, some flame rounds, the herbicide, the ban the wristband, uh, a bad knife, and one grenade. Keep the bad knife equipped first. The bad knife is if an IV actually gets you. The grenade is if an IV gets you again because the, the grenade will sit him down and possibly any other IVs that are surrounding you. But I'm going to set some guys on fire so that you don't necessarily have to worry about that. And we're, we're going to see how that plays out. All right. So the acid rounds because of that need to go up. That needs to go up. Uh, I'm not bringing a heal with me, um, and uh, I forgot to say the modulator needs to come out with us too, um, but um, that's just me uh, forgetting every now and then to to say words out loud. Um, so we've got that going on. Uh, let's, let's get some more stuff in this room because there's more supplies and another knife. Like I said, they load you with knives, so we don't need to worry about that. So like I said before, uh, we don't want that knife. We want a bad knife. Um, we want this knife. The worst of the knives. And we want one grenade, just in case that knife isn't enough. Um, and there is a uh, purple, uh, I mean a blue herb that we want to be able to grab. So that's why I'm leaving one spot open. And this should be good to go for us. I believe I'm forgetting nothing. And I took out the two other Ivy guys. So we are good to go. This is the most safe loadout I've ever given you guys for being able to get through a part that doesn't need to be this safe. But you know what? Every man's guide. I really want you to get through this and not feel like you got screwed over at the last second here because remember, we die here, we go back to the sewers. So, so I'm gonna, now we don't want to use the flame rounds yet. We want to hope that we got a clean shot to getting toward the door. Um, which this path I just took is it. If you don't have that clean shot, you're going to actually want to, the guy that was directly in front of me in my path, go ahead and pop him in, in one of his orange spots. And then if the other guy 
getting close to the door is too close, pop him in one of his orange spots. And if you spastastically are just like, I can't deal, you can pull out the flamethrower. I mean, the grenade launcher, I guess. But we're going to go ahead and use the herbicide. This is when the flame ma rounds actually matter. Because it resets the this ivy guys that are down there. So, now I will go ahead and make you guys feel a bit better. Uh, by giving you a loadout that will guarantee you. So, this guy... Setting him on fire right now. He will not get back up and bother us again. This guy... He's getting up even right now. So, he could be a pain. We're putting him down. Uh, he won't get back up. Not while we're doing this. Um, and finally... This one does get up, and we're going to put him down. Let's go ahead and get this right here. Now we only have one IV guy to pop. So, only one IV to pop. There's one that will be coming up the stairs usually. Oh, the RNG gods have blessed me. He is not coming up the stairs. He's right there instead. Bank of left. There's an IV guy right through this door. See, he's right there ready to get you. Just bank a left. And now that I told you to take out these two guys, it's a clear shot. Nothing. Nothing in your way. Zero things in your way. Doesn't that feel actually... Do you feel calmer about that? A lot of people who were um, saying that the, the Ivy was like getting to them. There are a lot of people who on Leon A's uh, um, Every Man's Guide were saying that the Ivy guys were getting to them. Um... Hopefully I just solved that for you. Hopefully you feel a lot better about uh, doing that. Um, I, I hope you do. I really do. Um, because that's what this guy is for. I, I hope you feel better about the idea of, of running through those guys. Uh, I had everything needed to be able to counter them to live through in case I screwed up any of that. I set enough of them on fire and I had a way to be able to cheat out if I wanted to by having the uh, grenade launcher on me. And the Birkin fight is the last time we're going to use the grenade launcher, so... Again, hug the wall. Don't let the green doors open on accident. Otherwise, you'll have people. 50-50 that there's someone right here anyway. There's not someone right here. Hug the wall anyway. Now we're going to go ahead and get Muff. Everyone wants to get Muff, right? Am I right, guys? And some girls? So, um... Here we go. We do Muff. We get a pouch right here. You can see where Mr. Raccoon in the background uh, is, is one of, where one of the Mr. Raccoons are. And definitely hug the right wall again because the power is restored and we don't want to deal with... I mean, a guy will come out of that door if you let that door open any other time. They're sitting right next to that door. So now, we are ready for the last bit of this. Like, I mean, we're, we're at it. Um... Um, I'm gonna have to step away for a second because it's really hot in this room. I'm gonna turn on the AC, um, but we're 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 there. This is this is the home stretch. Um, we are going ahead and we're opening up the bridge. And we're going to have to use the modulator now one more time. And actually, since we went and got that pouch, the modulator will be able to be thrown away. Uh, but we're going to grab a grenade here. There's a nade just sitting right here. So we're going to grab that. Uh, OSS. Um, I swear OSS is straight up in the main... This Yes, it does change. I knew it did from the A and B. OSS is uh, the left one is straight up. No matter what. Okay. We can drop it now. And as we're running, we are going to get a shield. Not a shield heal. We are going to make ourselves a shield because we're going to use it before we even approach the final, uh, uh, the, the G3 Birkin. Not the final Birkin. The G3. We're going to just put up a shield. Um, so we're running over where the fight will be. Um... We're, I'm gonna, so that I don't have to re-go through this uh, cutscene over and over, I'm gonna save it after I go ahead and activate this little cutscene of she, her being like, How do I get in? Oh no! Oh wait, it's the pendant! That's the key! And then that's how it goes. And then, finally we've got this. We've got that to get, we've got this to combine with it. 
it made six again so we've got plenty of rounds and we've got a shield heal i mean a shield not a shield heal to be able to use in just a second and i'm gonna get this ink ribbon because we are on our last save i am at one hour 42 minutes if i play my cards right and do this correctly in 18 minutes i can beat this uh birkin doesn't take much more than five minutes to beat carrying sherry takes a few minutes um, and then if I, um, use the, uh, spark shot properly at the very end, um, and her magnum rounds and all the loadout that I'll show you, um, I should be right at the two hour mark. So if you're around this, or even if you're at two hours yourself right now, I I'm telling you that I can do this in 18 minutes. Probably if I were to buckle down and not, and shut my mouth and not, you know, try to narrate this for you guys. Um, so if you're at the two hour mark, you most certainly can finish up the game and get this done. If you're at the two hour, 10 minute mark, you most certainly can still get it done, but you gotta buckle down. You're gonna be cutting it close, but buckle it down. Uh, you, you're, you got it. You're still getting it in the bag. Um, if you're at two hours, 15 minutes, it is possible. I have done it in 13 minutes, 50 seconds. That is the fastest I've done it, and I've done it way too many times now. So you're, you need 20 minutes ish is like your minimum of what you're going to want minimum. And you can still do it if you run it over and over at this last save point. So I'm going to save and then we're going to uh, do the final bit of this guide. We're, we're almost finished now. So here we go. All right. Now that I stood up and stretched, I know this guide is going longer than Leon's guide, but there is more to explain because she's, she is a different beast than Leon. Leon's more straightforward. Um, let's talk about the second to last loadout we've got for her A run for, um, the, the Birkin's G3 loadout. Um, we are going to go into it a little bit of a weird way. And it's because I want you to be able to do the maximum amount of damage while giving you the leeway of what the what if situations. So this is the best setup I've got for you. And it's the best way I can think of it. Though, modify it to your own needs if you're better with some weapons than others or think that, you know, some other way will work best for you. But do realize that uh, in the setup I'm doing right now, uh, submachine gun ammo is is full up and I'm going to be doing full up on submachine gun ammo again down at Birkin. So if you use a lot, make sure that you haven't gone through all of your white powders because I think they make about 88 per two. So, you know, if you have to make more powder, which we're going to have to make more rounds, uh, ju just remember that. I'm going through like a whole stack in this fight. I'm going through a whole stack in the next fight. Let's talk about what the loadout's going to be. It's going to be in this one, uh, our, the handgun, the handgun we have right now, but no ammo. We're just going to take it completely uh, full on ammo. We're going to have the uh, submachine gun and a full stack of 200 rounds. We're going to have the launcher with the stock attached because we now want the aim to be able to try to land uh, acid and fire rounds at his eyeballs, whether the the later exposed chest eyeballs or the, the shoulder and the back, if we're going to be doing that, um, because it does do more damage when you hit the eye. So the launcher with the stock, two stacks of acid rounds, at least 16 ish, one full stack of flame rounds. Um, a shield heal, a first aid, a knife, and you have to have the bracelet to get through the door. And on top of all of that, I'm going to use a shield that I just made before I even do the loadout so that I go into the fight shielded, shielded from his attacks. So he can hit me, I can use a first aid, the shield could start wearing off and he could hit me again, I can use a shield heal, and there is another first aid downstairs. Now, the knife... He can jump you, and if you, you know, the first time he goes down, he won't be jumping the first time he goes down. And we're going to use the knife, and I'm going to tell you that you probably don't want to put him down in flames the first time. Because if you do, you'll burn instead of being able to swipe him with the knife. You want to be able to do a lot of damage with the knife the first time. The second time you put him down, there's a chance that he can do his leap attack. And if you don't run through him, it'll end up using up your knife. Otherwise, he'll insta-kill you. If that's the case, you still have enough ammo to get through it all. Uh, you just won't be able to use any more knife tactics. You're just going to have to put him on his knees and then pound him with uh, submachine gun ammo and handgun. And there's a lot of handgun rounds down there. So, like, if you start running out of ammo, that's why we've got the handgun. The handgun has over a stack of rounds uh, just sitting down there that you can pound. His, you can decimate him with a handgun. 
On top of that, if we lose the knife because we have to use it as a counter, there are two flashbangs and one grenade down there. So if you ever lose the knife, go find either near where the elevator is, there's one flash uh, bang, or the exact opposite corner of that. Uh, uh, you can actually use your map if you're running around and try to pinpoint where it is. Uh, there's another one uh, on the other side. There are two flashbangs down there and a grenade. I would suggest getting the flashbangs first, but you need to have a sub weapon on you because if you lose the knife and he jumps you again and is successful, um, if you don't have the flashbang, he will insta kill you. Here's the thing acid, this is the one time and one and only time he can be stun locked with acid rounds, and that is the reason why we waited to get the grenade launcher. So let's show you the real strategy on how to do it, and let me hopefully do it correctly. But just remember, if you lose a knife, you did not lose the fight. You just need to go find a flashbang or a grenade, and you're going to pump them full of the submachine gun ammo, and you're probably going to have to run and get some handgun ammo that is littered all over the place. You'll still win the fight. This setup will get you a win for the fight. Just, just try to stun him when you can and get past him when you think he's going to corner you. Acid rounds, that's why we're bringing so many. So let's get into the game. Let's do it. I'm going to do the exact setup I just talked about. We're, we're getting rid of this. Uh, we're going to actually put the stock on there, but first I'm going to make sure that I don't need to make any more submachine gun rounds before I say anything more. Um, because I have a stack and then I don't actually have another full stack for later. So I'm going to go ahead and like combine some right now. Um, yep. Combining even more for right now. Um, so I'm going to store these. I'm going to store these. Um, and how many uh, acid rounds do I have? Ooh. Um, you know what? Uh, because I can, uh, I believe because I can. Oh yeah, there's an odd number of them too. Because I can, I'm gonna make another uh, uh, f fill out my acid rounds completely. So there's a full stack, um, and then I'm going to also get the uh, shoulder stock. So combine that. So I've got that, and that, and this, um. I'm trying to keep everything or orderly for my own brain, if you're wondering why I'm moving things around. And by the way, I need to actually use this now. I'm not even kidding about that. Um, and there's not the bad knife. You need a good knife because we're using some knife tactics here. Um, see how many knives the game has get given us and I've lost, you know, and done things and didn't do it perfectly. Um, you know, we've got enough to, to spare. We need a first aid and a shield heal. So I'm gonna take a first aid or whatever you've got. You see how many unmade heals I've got? I, I've got I've got five shield heals, a full heal, and I can actually make uh, four more shield heals. I You have a heals for days. I promise you with the guy that you're watching, you will not run out of a way, a way to you know heal yourself. That, that's not gonna be an issue for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that submachine gun and its ammunition. Um, and that is what we're going to finish this out with. Um, that is our setup. You're looking at it. Uh, let's make sure we go into this actually with an acid round ready. All right. So that's going to be our, our best friend right now. Everything is loaded, locked and loaded. Um, what we're going to end up doing here is that we're still going for eyeballs. Um, and we're going to use the submachine gun first to go for eyeballs. I'm going to wait to use the flame rounds until I put him on his knees the first time. But I'm going to try to submachine gun his eyeballs like crazy so I can use the knife on him and swipe him out. Um, easiest way to get his back eyeball is to let him try to pick something up. But we'll see if that happens. So, um... Oh, already hit me. Oh my gosh, everything's all wrong in the world. No, you don't. There's one eyeball. Can we get a second? There's the second eyeball. Most likely he'll try to grab something right now. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Boom. Now this is where the knife comes in, because we're going to go 
Don't hit his front where the eyeballs are. Aim a little lower. You hear the knife hitting three times? That's because it's hitting both of his arms and the back. That's why the knife gets used up so fast, actually, right here. Now get away from him. Because now we're going to have to worry about the Birkin that is going to be jumping all nimbly bimbly like. So, first thing we're going to do is probably need to lock him up a bit, which is fine. Oh, crap. And I'm going to switch around to this. Get I have back. Yep. I popped his back eyeball. See that accuracy that I was able to do? Switching the round again, pressing the R1 to switch it. I don't think I was able to pop it again, but... Oh, he's about to do the whole thing where his arm will slam down. Perfect. So I'm going to switch it to acid again. And I'm going to get past him with the acid because he's right here. Um, and Oh, I missed him. This is where I start getting iffy about using too many flame rounds. I like to finish him off with flame rounds. And he was able to actually miss that by getting in the animation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because uh, I'm in caution and I want to pick up handgun ammo to just show you that handgun ammo is very viable, I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Because you can aim it so well that we can, we can go ahead. Up. Oh, there he went. If That would use up your knife right there if you were doing it differently. So, um, handgun ammo, yes. And it's viable because now he's in his final form. He just decided to go all apeshit binoculars. So, this is when I'm going to start pounding his chest with flame rounds. Um, I'm going to try to stand right here and get another flame round in on his chest. Right there. But I'm going to flip it on over because he's got me in a corner now. And so when I do this next acid round, I definitely want him stunned. Um, in fact, I want him stunned and then I want him stunned again because I don't want to, I don't want to risk it. Um, and I should have reloaded. And there's no more eyeball to hit right there, but I need to be able to get out of this corner, so... And there goes the knife. This is what I was talking about. Now is the perfect time for me to show that I'm reloading for this to be, and here, here's one of the flashbangs, right here. So I'm gonna get out of this corner, like that. And I'm gonna reload for this. I'm gonna switch back over again. Ooh, he put me in danger. Oh god. Well, actually, we're going to just use that, so it's actually not a big deal at all. Um, Alright, come at me again. We're going to stun you. And we're going to switch over to the flame. I'm going to switch over to flame again. You see how I'm switching back and forth? I stun locked him. And because I put the stock on, I was able to actually pinpoint his eyeballs that are on his chest. I was actually to pinpoint accuracy, get his eyeballs. There are two important things you need to grab down here right now. You need the spark shot needles, and you need to go ahead and grab over here. Um, there is magnum ammo, or as close as she gets to having magnum ammo. So we've got that going on for us. We actually no longer need uh, flash grenades, so that's a thing. Um, and we actually don't need a lot. We don't need the flame rounds. So if you're looking at what you possibly might want to take with you instead, I would actually suggest that this is finally the time where you can go boink. Flame rounds are done. Um, and uh, you can actually grab. Um, the first aid is there. We could have used it. I didn't. Um, do I need it? Did he hit me at all? Did I get fully healed? Did anything hit me? No? All right, I'm going to discard it. Why? There is a, um... All right, here's some handgun rounds just in case. I don't know. Maybe you're running so low on ammo you need the handgun rounds. You, you can pick them up down here. If you're running low on ammo, you've got more spaces. So that, that would make sense that you could grab it. The grenade is over here. I missed it the first time. Here it is. That's what I care about. I want the grenade. Um, but there are a few other things that you could, you could pick up. Um, there, here's more handgun ammo. And like I said... They have handgun ammo, literally about two stacks. So that's why you bring the handgun, but you don't need to bring the ammo. You, it's, you, you're covered. Uh, like, I promise you, you're covered. So. 
We beat that pretty handily. We're, we got that done. There's another first aid and knife uh, on your way to the final fight. If you're running out of uh, first aids or you want that knife uh, to feel better, you're going to want to come over to the box right now and maybe put, uh, I don't know, that and uh, the acid rounds. Uh, even the grenade launcher. We'll put a few things away uh, just to make sure that when I'm in this final little run, I can most certainly uh, get it. Now, you saw I put that away and I threw away the flame rounds. That's because I have a bit of confidence in what I'm about to do of making sure of keeping away those uh, daggum plant people. If you don't feel the same way, um, I'm going to show you what you can do and what you can bring with you if it really is bothering you. If it really does bother you, here, I'll, I'll show you. Um, because I threw away flame rounds, uh, and I didn't want to bring the grenade launcher. But if you really, 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 really are bothered by that, we are only going to be able to take one stack of, of uh, grenades in there. And if you've been following along with me, look at, look at what we've got. Um, we've, got almost, we've got almost two stacks. The last fight, we're only going to need one. So I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, a stack of grenades. And what I'm going to be able to do is that if they do get too close or they do engage me and I can't land my shots, I, I will shove a grenade down their throat. That is, that is how that will go. Now, if you use your grenades differently, remember, I'm saying that my final loadout, I'm going to have three grenades on me. Maybe you only need, if you've just got one grenade, it's good enough. And they give you a knife. Remember, we did all this to make sure we'd have a knife on the way. So, uh, a knife and a first aid, just in case you need another first aid or something. Maybe you just pounded through the first aids when you're in the RPD or the uh, sewers or something. So, um, so we're going to have all of that covered for you. Um, all your bases. You're going to have a knife. You're going to have grenades. Uh, I'm going to tell you, place your shots on these guys. We're st you st see I'm still carrying this handgun with ammo. And I got the submachine gun to spray and pray. But if they get too close, I got a grenade. Because there are two Ivy guys you got to deal with. Claire? Yeah. The other two you run past. Thank you for being so nice to me. For helping me. I'm really glad I met you. I'm really glad your face looks normal again. Um, but save your thanks until I get you out of this place. So, that, I mean, really and honestly, this, uh, we, when she says run, like she's telling Sherry just to run for it, unlike Leon A., these IV guys, the first ones you go past, they will stay down. They will not get up fast enough to be able to attack you. So, when you go down the elevator as Claire, right here, um, this little bit, um, we're going to be able to get down here and just run by these first two that is our problem for Leon. Literally, that guy I'm pointing at, he's a problem for Leon. He's not a problem for uh, Claire. We need to run past. Because of Sherry and keeping with canonicity of trying to get her out of here, of course they can't attack like that. She has to be out of the way, which is why they do attack later. As in, right now. They're about to attack right now. But we're going to try to land our shots, and if we really need a backup, we got grenades. We got them. We're, we, we're, we're cool. We got this all. So one's going to land right there. And literally, orange bulbs. That's what we're going for. I know they can be, like, imposing, but... And his knee has another one. He's down. Um, if, you, if you get nervous about it, if they get too close, you can use the SMG, and remember we... Place your shots. You've got a laser sight on this. And if you don't place your shots, uh, you got grenades. You can toss them at them if they get too close. I got enough rounds in this that I can take down this last flaming guy with this. Hey, dude. So, if you can't tell, I'm not going to be taking the handgun into the last fight. So again, this is the box that we need to use, and we're going to be using a heal immediately, as in a shield heal. Um, 
Uh, I don't just have, I'm not gonna make a shield, I'm just gonna use this because I can. So we're gonna go into the fight with a shield. Now I'm gonna pause it and tell you, I'm at an hour 55. So I'm, I'm running pretty much what I said for the course. I was gonna beat it in about two hours um, and give you guys about 30 minutes leeway of what I was doing. Um, uh, some of that time is actually cutscene time that will be cut out at the very end because I didn't skip them fast enough. So about a minute of that will get shaved off. The last G4 loadout here, and this is the same loadout I would use if I were doing it for her B scenario also, pretty much. Um, this submachine gun, a full stack of ammo for it, the spark shot with making sure it's modifiers so it does more damage, uh, the stack of ammo you've got for that, that we've co collected, the revolver, and the uh, upgraded ammo for that, a shield heal, a first aid or an equivalent of a first aid, and a stack of grenades. We're going to go into that with that. Uh, it leaves us with the two spots to get the fuse and also to get the Gatling gun. But you're going to see that I don't use the Gatling gun. There's a reason. I, I play this as if I'm going to be playing Claire B. And so um, there are two things I do about it. One, the Gatling gun just tears up the final like G5, the actual Birkin that's, you know, it's the goes at the train. Second... Um, actually, the spark shot can put him down faster than using the Gatling gun. You will never be able to take him down, especially on hardcore, with only 400 rounds from the Gatling gun. The spark shot does it actually faster. So if you can place your shots with the spark shots and use the magnum rounds, that's actually what takes him down fastest. Then you switch to submachine gun ammo and your, and your Gatling gun. The only exception is if he actually does climb the wall, you don't knock him down with a grenade. If you can't knock him off the wall with a grenade, which you can throw if he starts climbing and you throw it fast enough, it'll knock him down, stun him, you can use the spark shot again. Uh, if he lands on top of the train, I'll use the Gatling gun to try to quickly bust all of his eyeballs and that will also stun him. If he's able to climb walls, it's a cycle. The first time he does it, he'll land on top of the train. The second time he does it, he'll jump straight back onto the platform on top of you the best he can, so you need to be moving. The third time he'll be back on top of the train. The fourth time he'll be on the platform trying to jump on you. Ad infinitum. That's how it goes. So, now that I've explained it, let's go ahead and do the loadout. Um, this goes away. I'm going to do that just so I can find uh, the needle cartridges a little easier. Uh, that goes away. I'm going to do that just so I can find the high-powered rounds a little easier. Um, I'm going to start putting things in place. I've got a whole stack of grenades all ready to go. Um, I'm putting that away just so I can find the submachine gun ammo a little easier. Um, here's a first aid, um, and let's find that shield heal that we'll need, um, it's right there. We've got a spark shot that we need to be getting on on us, um, the spark shot right there. I believe I already equipped this little attack, oh, uh, no I didn't, which is a good thing I just checked. I didn't combine it yet. We need that, we need to combine, and finally, the revolver. Um, we need the, uh, upgraded revolver on us. Now let's make sure that when we get the upgraded revolver on us, we go ahead and switch out ammo. Um, because now you've got actually normal rounds on you that you need to discard. So alright, you see what we've got? This is this is what we're doing it with. So I've got a shield on me, I've got uh, two heals on me with that, and just make sure that his charge attack is his most devastating one. Um, he will almost always use his charge attack as one of his first attacks, and after that, he'll, he'll do a few other animations before he tries to charge again. Those are your chances to actually really get him. Um, you need to get away from his charge attacks, which means running, turning a corner in the train somehow, like making the cor taking a corner somehow that he can't take as easily, or, or making him plow straight forward, and it, if he hits a wall, it leaves him straight open, wide open to the, uh, spark shot. So let's get into this. So he's gonna be right here. That's cool. I'm not even gonna try to engage him right now because I haven't found a way to stun him yet from this. But he will try to charge about right now, so I'm just gonna unload on him about right now with that. It's, it's very quickly after the battle starts that he tries to charge the first time. So I, I stay kind of away from him. See, there's the charge. But we got a spark shot ready, we knew this was coming, and all of a sudden, boom. Boom again. And it does, you see it does knockback stun damage if you get it charged all the way. So, um, oh, he's charging. He might get me. He got me. That's why I get for not turning the corner fast enough. But that's fine. 
That was actually purposeful. I want to show you guys that you can screw up on this. Um, so I'm going to stay close to him because he's close to cl trying to climb up a wall. He's going to do it soon. His animation is pretty obvious that he's going to turn toward it. Um, like, he's going for it right now. Boom. He's down off the wall. Spark shot. Spark shot. But you need to start backing up. Because even though you just use it, he's going to probably charge you. Yep. Just like that. But... You see, I'm always moving backwards while I'm fighting him. I don't risk that. Oh, boy. But we're getting close to when he should be trying to climb a wall again soon, so... I'm glad he's near here so I can... See, I can do this real fast if he's... He's a little too close. But... Nope. No, no, no. No, no, no. Didn't get him down. So you're gonna see the Gatling gun. This is where we do get out the Gatling gun. Oh, shoot. That is the first time he's ever done that to me. I guess it's because I've done enough damage. I still gotta get bring out the Gatling gun for a second. Because my rule is to try to leave about 200 rounds left on the Gatling gun. And to try to use a spark shot first. Uh-oh. I'm glad he hit the wall. Try to use up your spark shot first. He should be trying to climb the wall again soon. Yeah, there he goes. Nope. But he's probably going to charge again. So let's go ahead and try to clear this corner real fast. And... You see how it does kill him faster? And we still got even one round left for this form of them, which is the crawling on the ground pitiful gherkin. Let's go ahead and finish him off real quick. Plenty of rounds in here to go ahead and just Gatling gun him to death real fast and to keep the 200 that I would like to keep usually. And he's done. The spark shot tears him apart. You saw me use the SMG a few times to just make sure I was putting more damage on him. I knocked him twice off the wall. I guess I did so much damage that I did something that I've never done before, which is I knocked him out of his rhythm. He didn't land on top of the train. I guess that's a thing that happens. I, I guess I guess that you can stop it if you actually do so much damage. So in the B run, I'd want that Gatling gun still having about 200 rounds in it. And what did I say? We were going to get about two hours uh, in this. That's exactly what we did. So there you go. Claire Redfield, hardcore, two hours, 49 seconds. I said we'd get right about two hours again. And we used three saves. We got an S+. Plus. I gave you a solid 30 minutes to be able to lag a little bit behind, double back, get hurt, have to go to back to the box, linger in your menus a little bit more, make more heals, have to go back for anything, have to walk the liquors again because you forgot to freeze the, the herb herbicide um, uh, or anything else that goes wrong. 30 minutes, 30 minutes of time is, is plenty of time to be able to do it. So we've got this covered. Thank you so much for, for joining me on it. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this helps you out. Let me know again in the comments if there's any big time questions that you've got about what's going on with this. If there's something that uh, that really you can't get past. Now I'm got, I can't answer every single question. So if it's literally like asking uh, something that the video kind of already explains, I'm very sorry if I don't get to it as fast. But if somebody asks a question that honestly really needs an answer, um, I will answer it. And if it's important enough, I will put it in the pinned comment. On top of that, I ask one time that remember I'm not a speedrunner. So I know that there are probably speedrunner strategies and there are probably ways to be able to do it in a different way. But I've tried my best to, these are my strategies that I try to do as an everyman, as just a normal person who did figure all of this out on his own. And the strategies that people keep telling me, especially from the last guide, are speedrunner strategies. And what I found is that I've tested them out and they take a little bit of luck, patience, and trying over and over when a lot of the strategies I have uh, don't. 
they they just work the first time um, or maybe the second instead of having to make sure that you nail learn to nail it. I don't want to turn you guys into speedrunners. I just want you to have fun with your Gatling gun that you just unlocked. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope it helps. We'll get to the S runs, ver uh, the the second runs of the characters or their B scenarios, whichever one, what whichever you want to call it. We'll get to it very very soon. Um, those are the true hard mode because beating those with an S plus, man, it's hard. Um, and the most wiggle room I can give you is is not going to be the wiggle room I could give you here of thirty minutes. It's going to be more like fifteen. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you back here for the next one really, really soon. Bye!